clap. You say clap when I clap. No, I've already said the word clap, so now you don't need to physically clap. All right, Dave, take it away. Take it away. And a one, and a two, and I know what to do. (laughs) Hello and welcome to another episode of Do Go On. My name is Dave Warnicke and I'm sitting here waving at a camera in a Brisbane hotel room with Jess Perkins and Matt Stewart. Yay! Hello, David. Hello, Hang on, you went Jess first again. Oh, hang on. The tides have turned. <laughs> you were running. Is that a phrase? Am yeah, I, I was that? like, do I say changed? Turned? Is it turned? Can tides turn? Surely. Oh, How else do I get back tide. out there? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, big tide. Tides. Tides have turned. My turn again. The tide has turned I'm faster. I'm the King Ping. Than ping. Jess Perkins. Ping. King Ping. I'm the King Ping. Pinging off your bloody dial. I'm always pinging, mate. Yeah, half a champagne and your body off your... This is a wine glass of beer. Okay. okay? Sorry. Please. Oh, if you're that's going be to shame me, yep, and do it correctly. Thank you. Um, you're a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Ah, well, it's great to be here with you two. So good to be here. We are on the road. We are about to record tomorrow afternoon when we're recording our 200th episode live in Brisbane. Yeah. That'll be a lot of fun. So Couple that makes this episode 199. 199. Can you, do you think when we started this, did you have any idea of how long it would go for? No, I didn't. I didn't think about it. No, me either. No, the podcast I started before that went for 10 episodes and I thought that was pretty good. Far out, that is good. Pretty good. Apparently a lot of pods struggle to make it that far. I, th- I did two podcasts before this one and they both never got released, and they, I think they both recorded three or four episodes each. This is my first podcast. Wow. Oh. You're the secret of the success. You're the secret source. And it's funny to be like, did you ever think we'd make it to 200? Because what if we make it to 400, and then people will listen to this one and be like, idiots, you've done double that, you know? But that's another four years away. Good God. Oh, who knows? Who yeah. knows? I could be dead. Well, we all could be. I'll be more likely. Yeah, Got definitely. a bit of a head start on you. Yeah, big time. About a thousand years head start, mate. <laughs> Any day Shush, now. <laughs> a lady doesn't tell. <laughs> anyway, so yes, here we are. We're in our hotel room and we're recording tomorrow, like Dave just said. But in fact, we're recording right now. We are, we are recording one night. You think about it. Think about it. Like, technically, yeah. we are. Okay. And before we jump into this week's episode, we have to tell you that uh, Brisbane, you've missed out on that gig. Uh, that was the 200th episode, but we've got two more Aussie ones coming up at the moment. In Sydney, we're up there Saturday, September the 21st at Giant Dwarf. And then we're coming to Perth for the first ever time at the Comedy Lounge, Sunday, November 3rd. Yeah, that's going to be a lot of fun. We haven't been to Perth, so that'll be cool. And tickets are available to those shows at dogoonpod.com. That's right. Do you uh, know that? Oh, We'd I do love, now. love to see those people there. And quickly, guys, if you may indulge me again. Uh, Couple I weeks hate later, indulging you. we have an update on, I'm going to call it Piegate, my campaign to be crowned Australia's gourmet pie guy. Mm. Piegate makes it sound like it's controversial. Well, I mean, the controversy was two weeks ago I said I'd entered this competition uh, to be voted as Australia's gourmet pie guy. The person who gets the most votes, that's all it is, it's posted on that. And uh, if you m- some people may know me that I love pies and I have an Instagram account just about eating meat pies here in Australia. And um, I entered, It. people were wondering, hey, where's the entry, where's the entry? And uh, it, for some reason the first entry didn't work out and I had to email them a few times back and forth. So I entered again and I'm finally on the website. I've been on there for 24 hours at the time of recording. 1,200 votes in the 20 first 24 hours. Thank you so much to everyone that's voted. Mm. And I'm into fourth place. Yeah, that's huge. My eyes is on the prize. Kay. My eyes is on the prize. Just one eye. But I'm still 5,000 votes behind the leader, who is a man carrying a baby. I just don't think he's ready for the responsibility of fatherhood and pie pieing. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I mean, I've... I'll What's he going to spend that 10 grand on? Oh, supporting his child. Dave. No, thank you. <laughs> sorry to steal the limelight here, but I'm going to steal the limelight here. Um, I'm going to enter the race. Absolutely not. I'm entering. I'm going to go. You will not be entering. To my those. room over there. As soon as we're done here, and I'm going to enter. I, I'm going to enter as a sort of a kind of like the third party, uh, ticket. You know, like Kang versus your Kang or Kona. All or right. Sort of a, sure. Sure. I'm going to be um, pasty man, <laughs> in the pie competition. Because you prefer a pasty to a pie. I love a pasty. Talks about and that I, a lot. And I, people, I think you can vote. 
You can't vote twice, but I'm asking people to not vote for you. That means I will not win. No, do not do that. Do not do that. Do not vote for this man here, because if you do, that's a vote taken away from me. And th- you know, you don't, w- you you won't be the winner there. The winner will be Baby Man. Yeah, Baby Man. That's the win. worst thing. We should combine our votes here to take down Baby Man. But the top ten also there's a runner-up prize for the top ten, so I'm happy to do that. I don't need to be the pie guy. I just want to be pasty but boy. But you are taking taking pie guy away from me. Hmm. Vote for Dave. Thank you. And then if you have another computer or get your girlfriend or dog or boyfriend or cat. Or husband or wife. Or all of them to vote for me. Fantastic. As Pasty Boy. Okay, I can support that, Pasty Boy. I'm Friends, gonna get, family. I'm, I'm going for Nick Mason's title of number one Pasty Boy. <laughs> <laughs> now, some people have said you can only vote in Australia, which is technically true, but overseas people have also told me they've been using a VPN. So, um, Should you be putting this on the record if Brumbies is listening? Oh, I, I doubt do they're really doing that much research into their entrance. Dave is not encouraging <laughs> anyone to do it, but <laughs> no, if someone accidentally s- stumbles onto a yeah, VPN. Yeah, I've just said some people can do that. But if you are in Australia, which is the most important people, you can vote once per device. So if you have a computer, a tablet, a phone on Wi-Fi, phone off Wi-Fi, your mum's phone, your work computer, I don't know what your dog's got, anything like that. You can also My vote... My dog's ag- got... Um, not long to live. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for bringing it up, Dave. Well, ha- hack that You're dog. You're the dog here hack, now. Hack the dog before it dies. <laughs> vote for me and then let it go. My dog's got worms. It's not going to die. It just has worms. Well, yeah, but those worms have rabies. It's got an itchy bum. And they're eating its ass out. <laughs> <laughs> My dog's got an itchy bum, Dave. Well, I, as Pie Guy, I will f- I'll help him out. Will you? That's one of my many you, promises, my campaign. Will you right. use your mon- your winnings to buy worm medication for my dog? Yes, I will worm your dog. Dave, will you also buy me a dog? Yes. One with worms. No, I'll have to, well, thank God, that'll be a cheap dog, I imagine. Because you're already buying us baroness <laughs> That's I want to right, be gonna, a lady. I'm going to buy you guys pies and also an f- official certificate from Sealand that recognises you as the baron and dame that you deserve thank to you. be. Thank and a much. dog with worms. While we're plugging, one last quick plug before we get into the episode. Oh, there's a link to that voting in the description of this episode. No time. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> Jess and I are doing our show Razzle Dazzle. Uh, we've got one more show in Brisbane. That's right. When this comes out. Tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, but then... That's the Thursday. Tickets for Melbourne Fringe. Hey, we haven't announced it yet, I don't think. Uh, we're doing Melbourne Fringe as well. And the dates are September. <laughs> and you can get tickets also via either of our websites, mattstewartcomedy.com slash gigs or jessperkins.com.au slash shows. shows. We should have really coordinated there. Well, you're more of a show. I don't want my you're website. You're more of a showman. I'm more of a gig. My website's about me. Pig. Okay. Right. So why does it have to coordinate with your website? We already share enough, Matt. Let me have something that's mine. Thank you. And he's trying to take really my pie titles. Like, you can't let us have our own things. Yeah. Why do you have to be involved in everything? Where are you looking? You're looking at that painting of a beach with one tree on it? I wish I was there right now. What a <laughs> sad tree. <laughs> that's a sh- There's a lot of shit decor in this, in this hotel. I'd, I'd hang a hammock from that tree. Uh, to what? Yeah, you'd It'd hang be a sad hammock. It'd be a noose, yeah, You'd hang basically. something from that tree, yeah. What a way to go. <laughs> What have you? What have you? What have you? <laughs> all right, let's let's fucking pod, hey? All right, team. Check out all those links in the description here. Now, we always start the show with a question, mm-hmm. and uh, the question gets us onto a topic that's usually suggested by a listener. One of us is going to report on that. It is my turn. You two don't know what the topic is, so let's do it. All right. My question is... Let's do it. The um, question is, what is... When we do it together, doing it makes love... Doing it takes love. I love it when we're doing it together. <laughs> Thank you. And if you haven't heard the show before, we do that every single week. <laughs> 199 times. Who would have thought? Who would have thought we'd make Who it this far? Thought? All right, my question is, what is arguably the world's most prestigious collection of awards? Logies. C- correct. I will give you a point for that. Kay. Whoever's keeping track of the score, collection give Jess the point. Pull it, sir. Oh, pretty good. But are you, are you saying someone's won a collection of awards or it's No, a so these five awards are up for grabs nearly every single year. Oh, it's not the Nobel EGOT Plus. Oh, Nobel Prizes. It's the Nobel Prizes. Wow. Wow. Actually, not, wow. I didn't even know that there was only five, but I was like, well, it can't be Let an me list them ceremony. for you. Okay. Hottest bod. <laughs> <laughs> in science. Hottest dad bod in yeah. science. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a controversial one. What else is there, Matt? You got three more to go. There's... uh. 
penis price. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Is that for the best or worst? Well, it, <laughs> worst, it depends on the judges. Worst dress penis. Yeah. Two more. Um, then you've got, obviously, uh, best book. Um, mm-hmm. Favourite hat. Favourite hat. That's the five. Favourite hat of the year. Yep. Oh, that's good stuff. Who's it going to be? And the winner, again, is Bowler Hat. This is a stage with five hat stands. Which is it going to be? Is this like a Miss Universe thing? Yeah, right. The Boater Hat has been shortlisted 15 years in a row. Is it finally his The Boner Hat? Boater Hat. You definitely said boner hat. Oh, the boner hat's actually won 15 years in a row. Yeah, it has. <laughs> Go boner hat. Peace prize. Bang. Chemistry. There's multiple science ones. Yeah. There. Chemistry. Physics. Physics. Yeah. Um, then there's... Is there literature? No. <laughs> yeah, literature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Literature yes. and most popular on-screen performer. <laughs> also known as the gold Nobel. <laughs> <laughs> that is correct. Uh, the other one is... Medicine or physiology. Oh. And then later on, which we will discover, they added in economics. Oh, you can get a Nobel Prize for economics. That sounds mm. lame. Um, I'm very good at spreadsheets. Have a big prize. Okay. Well, I did year 11 economics, so I'm probably up for that. Have oh I yeah. won one? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't <Yeah>. checked. <laughs> You're the only one to ever complete year 11 economics. <laughs> Honestly. Did you complete it? Did I complete complete it? it, yeah. Okay. I'm not entirely sure what economics Switched is. Switched into politics the next year, so I might have won both. Is there yeah. a politics one? Yeah. Peace. Yeah, that's Politicians often win the peace one. That's correct. Often people who have killed a lot of people that year. Yeah, but how do you get peace without killing lots of people that well, year? Well, let me quote Mr. Michael Franti when he famously sang, you can bomb the world to pieces, but you can't bomb the world to peace. And I live by that. Wow. And he was, of course, the winner of the Nobel <laughs> Peace Prize in 1979. Yeah. Good year. About the year he was born, probably. <laughs> Could you get on with this? I don't get that reference. Um, okay. I'm much too young. <laughs> the uh, This topic was suggested by probably w- our most prolific topic suggester, which is me, a.k.a. Yusuf. He in suggested Scotland. last week's topic. I know. <laughs> Yusuf, does. you're on a roll, my friend. Well, well, bloody don't we? There's many, many we've done. Remember, he's the one where I picked Iron Brew and he was in the room in the front row. So he's... And he gave us Iron Bruce. He's the only one I think we've ever said. Every live show was like, are you in tonight? The only one who actually said yes. Yeah, that was <laughs> To the point sick. where I thought, this this guy's shitness. Yeah. And he was actually telling the truth. He's shitness. Uh, does that translate? He's shitness. Yeah. He's taking a shit on us. Yeah, and I enjoyed it. For comedic effect, he's shitting. We oh appreciate nice. appreciate your shit, Yusuf. Uh, do you guys know much about the Nobel Prizes apart from uh, the fact that you could list uh, yes. some of them? I know Sheldon Cooper wins one. Yeah, Saddam Hussein won one. He Adolf did Hitler not. won one. No, um, <laughs> the the well. Grand Wizard of the Ku Klux Klan won one. I think there are uh, some controversial winners, which we will get to. Amazing and nominees. I think, I think yeah, I think Satan won won a <laughs> yeah. Peace Prize one year and economics know? in the same year. Yeah. He Notoriously, God always robbed yep. at the last minute. He's a real Meryl yeah. Streep, he is. He's got, yeah, Meryl Streep famously robbed. <laughs> famously robbed, apart from the three Academy <laughs> Awards that she's won. Yeah, robbed. Though actually, uh, fair enough, she's won, she's been nominated like about 20 times. So, hit rate. Not yeah, that great. Meryl, that great. your hit rate is not that great. Yeah. She's doing a lot better than you, Dave. Well, I've never lost. Okay. I've never been nominated and lost an Oscar. Well, that be said. I will let that be said, but yeah. I <laughs> won't agree with it. <laughs> Well, it is time to kick on with the report. Now, do you know who the Nobel Prizes were founded by and named after? Alfred Nobel. Yes. Swedish man. Uh, he was also a bad person. And he was born in Stockholm, actually, in 1833, would you believe? We're sitting a lot closer <laughs> together than usual, and Jess is definitely... Do you want to just read this report? Did you, quite had well you read, read that? Did you know it? You knew it was Alfred or not? No, I'm fucking reading his computer. I'm sitting right in front of it. I believe you dogged us like that. I mean, I, I'm sitting in a position that you made me sit in because it's right for the camera. So I can't move and Dave's laptop is pushed so far forward I can't help but stare we're, at we're it. We're now sitting around a table like people do on sitcoms. It's like no one sits like this. Right, where they leave a whole yeah. gap. Yeah. Go on, show, show the people at home the back of your head if you I like. I don't want to. I'm very self-conscious about it. People don't know that it's bald at the back. I've got a beautiful profile. I like people knowing that I can smell things from a metre away. That's really normal actually. <laughs> You're right. I was trying to say I've got a meter long nose, but I did not get that at all. <laughs> I'm in the room. 
<laughs> you said that after moving away from me and I was like, are you trying to put down that you think I farted? I can smell from up <laughs> to a meter. Yeah, pretty <laughs> highly tuned. Sometimes I can sense that there's a lavender yeah. bush nearby. Mm. <laughs> if I'm standing Only in the lavender. Only one arms reach. <laughs> within one meter. All right, let's do this. Alfred Nobel, would you believe, was born in Stockholm, Sweden in 1833. Jess, how did you know it, that? Called it. I really did think you knew that. That makes me a you fool. You thought I knew the name or you kn- thought I, thought I knew, knew all of that? Thank you. It wasn't until you started giggling at yourself that I realised. Oh, yeah. It'll always ruse. be the giveaway. <laughs> Jess, did you know that he was the fourth son of inventor and engineer? Emmanuel? Emmanuel. Was it? Yes. And his wife? Oh. Sweet. I called her... Caroline. Caroline. <laughs> Thank you, Matt. Well done. Uh, I called fa- her Cass. Sweet Caroline, actually. <laughs> oh, that is so good. The pun king <laughs> has struck in Brisbane. Sweet That's a pun? Of course Caroline. it is. <laughs> You replace the word sweet with Swede. And she's Swedish. Maybe I am good at puns. You are good. And I don't that's like that's nothing that to be me. proud of. I know. <laughs> All right. So Unless you're from Britain. They love it over there. They Do don't they? know that it's embarrassing. They love puns. Yeah, they're big oh, pun those heads. Those poor people. A lot of our listeners. <laughs> Yuck. Ooh. No, I, love, I love their their puns. Their punny ways. Yeah. Dave, come on. Okay. The family had a pretty rough time being impoverished and only four of their eventual eight children even made it into adulthood. Oh, my God. So, What no happened to the others? <laughs> Sorry. They didn't make it, Matt. <laughs> Sorry. I just realised. Yeah. Um, all they good got held back at school. They're still in grade three now. Mm. Very immature. Exactly. And all good yeah. things must come to an end. Oh, my God. As a child, Alfred was naturally curious about science, being especially in- interested in explosives. Yeah. Which is a strange thing to be interested in as a kid, but I love it. No, it's not. It makes perfect sense. Starts explosives to make are cool. <laughs> and it makes way more sense why they give peace prizes to people who blow stuff up. Yeah, Am I remembering this right? Well, I'll find out later, I guess. Uh, his father also taught him the fundamentals of engineering, his dad being an engineer. Then in 1842... Nobel's family, when he was nine, moved to Russia where his father had opened an engineering firm providing equipment for the Tsar's armies. It's here that the family's fortunes changed, figuratively and literally, as they became quite wealthy. Can we please call the Tsar's armies the Tsarmies? Mm. Is that a pun? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I think it's portmanteau. Mm, pun manteau, thank you. <laughs> it was also during this time that Alfred went to school for the only time in his childhood, only going for 18 months. But once they did get money, he did have private tutors. By the age of 16, he was an accomplished chemist and was fluent in English, French, German, Russian and Swedish. That's so many languages. Mm, but I haven't quite nailed English. <laughs> <laughs> I do good, though. Yeah, you do good. I do good, but. But he's a smart man. That's what I'm trying to put out. He's a very smart man. He studied chemistry in Paris and then worked in the USA for four years, working under Josh Erickson... Who created the first armoured warship. And he did that, what, in the, the shop above? <laughs> 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 oh, working <What>? under. Working <laughs> under. I mean, sorry, my brain just can't keep up sometimes because Matt, that is... If you're going to regret face, do not turn your yeah, face look at away the camera, from mate. the camera. Show People show need to see, they deserve that out, to please. see it. Well, I can't edit it out because we are filming the whole thing. You can edit that out of the film if you want. I'm not going to edit anything out. I'll... Take that on board, though, and not talk anymore. Okay. Uh, in his mid-twenties, Alfred filed his first patent for a type of gas meter, and this would be the first of many inventions that he would patent. He then returned home to work in the family factory in Russia, <coughs> pardon me, making military equipment used in the Crimean War. Things were going really well for the family, but then the war stopped, and suddenly they had nothing left to do. So the family went bankrupt. Ah, oh. and I'm getting it. He loves war. Yeah, well, a lot Hates of people, peace. A lot of people get really rich off war. Yeah. And very poor off peace, which is what happened to their family. So he had to move back to Sweden. And this is when he began in his 20s to devote himself to the study of explosives. Right. Things that go bang, uh. you could say. Mm, he loved to bang. Loved to bang. Uh, at the time, the only dependable explosive for use in mines was black powder, which was basically just gunpowder. This was originally used by the Chinese around the 9th century and no one had come up with a better alternative for 900 years. Would you say that he gets more bucks for his bang? Look at the camera. Look at the camera. (laughs) Stand by (laughs) it. So the technology has kind of stalled for nine centuries and Alfred hoped that he could create a better and more reliable explosive by using the recently discovered 
but highly volatile and very dangerous liquid compound known as nitroglycerin, which had been synthesized a few years earlier by Italian chemist Asacanio Sobrero. Nailed that? Um, sure. Good name, though. You're asking someone who just said they can hardly speak their own language. I do good, but... Yeah, she does do good. She does better in Italian. That's true. Si, va bene. It's all about confidence. Va bene, va bene, va bene. Va bene, si. Va bene, va bene. Uh, allora. Yes. That's a cosy. <coughs> <coughs> uh, nitroglycerin is a colourless, oily liquid, and it was much more powerful explosive than black powder, but it was very unpredictable, and most people wrote it off as too dangerous to actually use practically. The liquid is shock sensitive, meaning that a physical shock can actually cause it to explode. So it was nearly impossible to transport safely. Right. You couldn't put it in the old horse and cart because it would just explode the horse and oh cart. Oh, no. You don't want an exploded horse. You do not want that. It's just messy. Mm. And yet, Alfred Nobel experimented with it, with it in his own shed. Good. Quite dangerous. And, uh, but it went quite well at first. In 1863, he invented a type of detonator used with nitroglycerin, and the world began to take notice of this relatively young man. Oh. But he hadn't ironed out all of the safety kinks. And the next year, in 1864, Alfred Nobel's nitroglycerin factory slash shed exploded, killing several people, including his brother Emil. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Is that one of the kids who didn't make it to adulthood? Or? Yeah. Sadly, he was one day shy of his <laughs> 18th birthday. Oh. Far out. Poor Emil. He exploded his brother. He exploded his brother, but Alfred was unfazed by this and continued on his pursuit of creating a safe product, which basically actually meant more experimenting with a very unsafe product. <laughs> so he doubled down and built several several more factories. Uh, I reckon just have a, a nice respectful break for a bit, you know? Yeah. But no, straight back to it's it. Not, that's what Emil would have wanted. Yeah. A respectful break. Yeah. If I die... Pod can continue, but a respectful break. What's respectful? Six days. You can continue the following Wednesday. Right. Basically. But we won't like we won't tweet for six days or something. Yeah, thank you. But we'll definitely get someone else in and we'll record a pod. Oh, that's fine. Okay. Yeah, all right. You know it's not the same for me. Oh, three days. No. (laughs) Six to eight months. Of no tweeting. Years. The pod has to end for six to eight years. Let's say seven. And then we get the band back together and do a reunion tour. Yeah. Like the original podcast, which was without Jess anyway. Yeah. (laughs) That's right. Technically, we would be doing our original show, so it's not as disrespectful. Yeah. This is brutal to find out. Sorry. We'll stop doing our show, the one with the three of us. Right. And we'll we'll go back to our old show, which was the two of us. Yeah. Immediately. Yeah. (laughs) Do go on. Well, I think it was called. Is that what we call yeah, it? Yeah, I think that's. Yeah. Yeah, we should go. Yeah, we go back to the old name. It's a good title. Yeah. Good title. Catchy. Hmm. Remember that now I came up with it. Now you kind of that is untrue. About it. <laughs> that I remember <laughs> it. No, I do not remember it. But <laughs> no, I we debate about who came up with the title. Oh, do we? <laughs> yeah, we do. I'm confident it was me. Incorrect. You you loved it, but I suggested it. I wrote down six potential titles. One of them was "It Starts with a Question," and I'm so glad we didn't go with that. That sucks. That's really bad, isn't it? I'm 100% sure it was me. Well, yeah. How can we put it starts with a question on a t-shirt? You how could you call anything that starts with a question? Obviously, there were no bad ideas that day. It'd have to be and it starts with a ideas. question? You know? Uh-huh. Uh, Dave, do go on. Okay, do go on. Thank you. The phrase, oh, the phrase, the phrase I, I came created. Up with. <laughs> do you really believe you came up with it? In my memory, yeah. That is embarrassing. What <laughs> proof do you have that you came up with it? Knowledge. Facts. <laughs> Knowledge. Power. Law. Where did you? Where did the inspiration come to you? God. God. Yeah. I just thought, ugh, to go on, you know? <laughs> and then, I'm, you know, the rest is history. God, God's famous catchphrase. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, he's exploded his brother and he's built a new factory. Everything is on track. Uh, continuing to invent other stuff whilst experimenting with nitroglycerin, in 1865, Alfred created the first invention that would actually put him on the map. It was a blasting cap. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a... This is where the hat yeah, category came in. Won the <laughs> Nobel Prize for Best Hat that year. It was an improvised, sorry, improved detonator made up of a small metal cap containing a mercury filament that. Uh, filament? No, it's fulminate. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's a cool new word. Yeah. It w- could be exploded by either shock or moderate heat. 
It was a real leap forward in uh, explosive technology, and the world took a step closer itself to using large but reliable explosive, which is his mission in life. It's to create big explosives. Big bombs. Big bangs. Yeah, big bombs, but they were reliable and in a yeah, way safe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love the idea of... Safe I want to explode stuff <laughs> safely. safely. <laughs> um, how many brothers have you got? Well, one less than last year. What happened? I don't want to talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> love safety, though. Remember love that. Love safety. It's my, it's my number one thing. Well, Matt's going to grab a beer over there. Yeah, and you definitely had enough lead to just take your mic with you, too. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. So he's invented the explo- uh, the cap, the blasting cap, but he still couldn't use the cap reliably and safely with nitroglycerin, which is his big dream. Oh, it's good to have a dream, isn't it? Yeah. I imagine. Oh. Oh. I'd love to have one someday. <laughs> one day, maybe I'll think of a dream. He tried a bunch I'll of different dream stuff. A dream. He tried a bunch of different things. Uh, trying to combine the oil with different substances like cement, coal and sawdust to try and make it like safer, but these didn't work. But then in 1867, he really put himself on the world map and etched himself into history when he combined it with diatomaceous earth. Oh, yeah. that's what I would have suggested that first. I know. Yeah, yeah. It's embarrassing. It took him three years yeah. to discover this. It's always the last place you look. And mm. the last place you look is always diatomaceous earth. <laughs> <laughs> that's me. Can Maybe that's spell me. spell diatomaceous? Yeah. Yeah, great. Just checking. Otherwise, <laughs> I'll let you know how to do it. Uh, <laughs> by, by chance, he discovered that the diatomaceous earth soaked up the glycerin and made it safe to handle, but it could still be explosive when needed. Yeah, no, duh. That's what diatomaceous earth yeah. does. Correct, correct. God. I guess you find out these things for the first time sometime. Well, I, I did guess. it when I was a baby. <laughs> oh, I feel like I've always known it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, just, it's just innate for me. Right. It, you just had a certain... How do I say? Uh, how do you how do you say? Can you help me out? Feeling. Feeling. That's it. Thank you. Feeling. I never. I'm always lost for words. Uh, so he just invented dynamite. 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 Naming it after the Greek word for power, dynamis. Ah. Uh, uh. Dynamis. It's probably dynamis, to be honest. A lot of these words I have not said out loud before. There's a lot of European names in here. I'm also going to quote from Wikipedia European now. European names. Oh, I'm coming up to many of them. All right. <laughs> many Swedish and Norwegian names. Uh, I'm going to quote from Wikipedia. Something I rarely do is this. Uh, this had no other sources, but it really made me Dave, laugh. Dave, let's not muck about. You're basically always just reading Wikipedia. That is incorrect. <laughs> you know that. First he tries to claim the title. Mm. Now he's trying to claim it's all about Wikipedia. Are you trying to create a rift? <laughs> It's just all about. No, I just I know that that riles you up. That there are a couple of listeners who call this a Wikipedia show, and you it really grinds your gears. It certainly does. Wikipedia is a great source. Fantastic, a great starting point. Great Jumping place off. to start. Yeah. Fantastic. I just loved this quote, and like actually couldn't find any evidence for it anywhere else, but I still enjoyed it. Talking about how he named it. Quote: Nobel had also considered naming the highly powerful substance. Substance. Nobel's safety powder. That's good. I love that. An old like old old timey hustler sort of thing. Come on, get some uh, Nobel's <laughs> no danger explosive. <laughs> <laughs> like that. I love any time somebody just wants to put their name in their yeah. product. Oh, it's so good. Well, he was big on that later, obviously, when it came to <laughs> awards. But so you, he's going with dynamite, something that we still, over 100 years later, know dynamite's a very, very famous thing. But I wonder if he had named it something as dumb as Nobel Safety Powder, yeah. would it have taken off? Oh, would it'd probably be NSP. Yeah. Or T N T. What does TNT mean? Dynamite. Oh, thank <laughs> you. was there for us all along. All along. They're all about education. How would you do dirty deeds? I do them dirt cheap. Okay, that makes sense to me. Mm. Mm. Thunder? Question mark. <laughs> Struck? Exclamation mark. Uh, TNT. I've, I've looked it up here, and uh, this is speaking of words I can't pronounce, it's an abbreviation for the explosive. Trinitrotuline. <laughs> Silly name. <laughs> TNT's yeah. way better. TNT, catchy. Also, Nobel safety powder. NSP. NSP. Uh, but he went with dynamite, and uh, he was granted patents for the invention of dynamite in the USA and the UK, and it was quickly adopted by companies around the world to blast tunnels, create canals, and build railways. 
It made Nobel very famous and very, very rich because everyone needed his invention. Oh, right. cool. And he had all the rights to it. People, yeah. but even like, not even just like governments needing to blow up tunnels. Even people just like, <laughs> oh, my drains are clogged. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, chuck it was some dynamite in there. Chuck some safety powder in Before there. Before Drano was invented, yeah. people used to blow up their pipes. And God, it was smooth after that. Before plungers were invented, you yeah. just chuck a stick of dynamite down chuck there. Chuck a stick of dynamite. Clean it up. Mm. Then obviously build a new sewage system. <laughs> yeah. Same with like cleaning up crime scenes mm. or destroying evidence. Yeah. At a crime up. scene. At a crime scene. Oh Blow no. We blew up uh, the police station. Let's get rid of the evidence by blowing it up. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Oh, did I leave? Uh, you know, when you leave um, a house and you think, oh, did I unplug my straightener? These criminals were like, did I leave fingerprints on? Oh, that's right. I blew it I up. I blew it up. So I need not worry. Thank you so much for that straightener analogy because that really put me in the place. I know. I know. Oh, yeah, the straightener. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I yes, relate yes. to that. Happens all the time. And if you did leave your fingerprints on something, relax. Just blow up your fingers. Yeah. Blow up your fingers. People are like, did you do this? And you're like, no. How, how could I? I got no fingers. Who, me? Stub hands? <laughs> no. <laughs> Stubsy. <laughs> <laughs> you left your straightener on? No worries. Blow it up. Blow it up. I mean, you're just there, just unplug it. I've blown it up. It's too late, I've blown it up. Why also, worry? while you're at the shops, can you buy me a new straightener? I blew mine up again. <laughs> Sorry, blew up the shop. No worries. <laughs> Am I what in a, an old-timey ad that uh, is trying to spruik this wonder product? I what mean, we've it, just what, done it. What would it. But what would it sound like from the... Uh, the uh, Need some blown <laughs> up? Well, no worries, we got down on my... <laughs> Sorry to the upstairs yeah. neighbours. I'm, I'm glad I asked. Is anyone working above us? <laughs> yeah, Are we working under <laughs> anyone? <laughs> We're working on a battleship up there. <laughs> That's the thing I was trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> so everyone needs this brand making new invention, Dynamite. And he capitalised on this by building factories all over Europe to make his Dynamite and set up a massive corporation that dominated the market. He also continued to experiment to improve his product and he made it stronger and more reliable over the next few years. He also created and patented other explosives, including gel ignite and basaltite. Ah, I've heard of gel ignite. I've heard of basaltite. Oh. Natalie Basaltite, <laughs> the singer of Rogue Traders. An actor in Neighbours. Uh, he was also in constant legal battles with people who tried to create similar products. <laughs> Come on. Nah, go on then. Oh, you wanted me to laugh at I just more. wanted you to give me a little, because that was quite funny. Was it? Oh, no, I'm kidding. Fuck I'm you, kidding. Dave. Nah, fuck you. I'm giving you nothing now. Fine with me. I'll just carry on with the report. Give uh, him nothing after all this great, interesting information he's giving us. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you're doing a great job. Doing a real good. No, nah, no, nah, good on you. Nah, nah, great, Dave. You're the best. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, best report giver two years in a row. Thank you. Self appointed. It was not self appointed, it was voted for. Uh, by the Patreons, people what? we love and respect. The year before, oh. it was self-appointed. That was unofficial. Unofficial. All right, off you go. Uh, so people were trying to sue him. Uh, so no, trying to u- trying to get around paying him by inventing their own dynamite. But he would s- he was suing the pants off of them. Nice. Getting even richer. And, and then he's getting more pants. Yeah, he was also blowing the pants off them. <laughs> <laughs> this time with I- another invention, the pants blower. <laughs> Much like a leaf blower now. The pants yeah. blower would just blow Blade someone's pants, pants off. <laughs> it also <laughs> included Dunham. He's one of those people that gets... More technically, it should have been called the <laughs> leg blower because they were blown off. Their too. legs were blown off. Probably more accurately called a killing machine. <laughs> yeah. Here's a gun. <laughs> he also uh, marketed his TNT powder to dentists. Getting rid of that unwanted plaque and ta-ta. <laughs> And heads. <laughs> yeah. You got a, you got an overbite there. You want to get me to fix that up for you? Or That's how yeah. they used to deal with teeth problems. We'll pull them out. <laughs> Here's some wooden ones. Apparently, like, even my grandparents' generation would get new teeth for, like, their 21st birthday. That would be seen as, oh, you're an adult now. We'll yank your teeth out and give you a nice pair of false teeth. Apparently, that was, like... Yeah, or my grandmother. In I, the 40s or... Her first paycheck, apparently, from when she was a teacher, she spent... She hated, had horrible, horrible teeth from growing up in the country on a farm where they didn't look after them and uh, spent the first paycheck getting a whole new set. Amazing. Wow. Because I, like, growing up, I would have thought, 
older people often have false teeth. That's sort of a cliche. And that was because over time they wore away. But it was like a decision people often made young. Yeah, she sure would. She would have been in the Wild. 20s when she And just to take them out. Oh. And like going, oh, so good. I can't wait to get this new set of teeth. Wild idea. Crazy. Since then, they've come up with this idea of brushing teeth. Yeah, keeping them just clean. Keeping them for a bit. Mm, but you have to brush every day. You only have to replace your teeth on one day. Yeah. Do but you, know you do have to put them in a glass with that sort of fizzy water. Mm. And then go to bed like this. I was always desperate to see my grandma without them in and she'd never let me. She would wow. never let me. I'd be like, show, I want to see him. Never let me. Show us your gums, Nana. Yeah. <laughs> Good night, darling. That's what I wanted. Give us a kiss, would you? <laughs> Go on, give us a kiss. Go on. No, thank you. What if you give me a kiss? Okay. No, no, no please. Thank you. <laughs> no, please. <laughs> yuck, yuck. No, no. Sorry, I'm just kissing you in the microphone. Theatre of the mind. Because oh, the being ASMR <laughs> section of the show. We always have that. So he's suing the pants off people now. Oh, so yes, and that makes him, uh, he's, he's already rich, now he's crazy rich. Inventing like crazy, and in 1893, he decided to expand his empire from dynamite into the arms industry in Sweden, founding what was referred to in a couple of articles as the famous Beaufort's Arms Factory. I hadn't heard of it. Makes sense. He's blowing people's limbs off. Yeah, he may as well. start making false arms. <laughs> yeah, yeah, makes sense. <laughs> uh, so he started manufacturing weapons. Uh, you You're on uh, timeout. Matt's go- uh, going to jump off the balcony, I believe. <laughs> no, he's just sitting on the couch. You going on timeout now? Okay, a little bit quiet time. Uh, so he's manufacturing weapons, which he's makes him weapons, yep. even wealthier. Is that how you do it? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, if you're an arms dealer, have you heard about this? Have you heard about this? Yes. You can get a lot of money. Cool. You do have to make a few sacrifices. Ethically. Those sacrifices are other people's lives. Right, 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 right. But apart from that, I mean, that's probably the only drawback. But I'm not shooting them. No, you're just giving uh, weapons to other people. Uh, they can do whatever they want with them. Yeah, I don't, I'm not they making them They can just put shoot. them in a cupboard and leave it. Who knows? Might just put it on the wall for decoration. Yes, exactly. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Uh, he, was a, he was a big inventor, though. All up, he patented over 350 inventions, meaning that if he compared himself to Thomas Edison like Homer Simpson did on The Simpsons, he would still be about 2,000 inventions behind. Whoa. But still pretty good. Thomas Edison did that many. Yeah. God damn, like, get a life. Have yeah. you heard of books or chicks? <laughs> you know? <laughs> the, two, the two coolest <laughs> thing. <laughs> uh, books and chicks. Uh, get a chick, read her a book. <laughs> <laughs> chicks dig that. I love a man that reads to me. Really? Yeah. Really? C spot, run. <laughs> run, okay. spot, run. Now you can lift the little flaps. Where's spot? There he is. Whoa, 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 whoa. Slow down. <laughs> <laughs> um, so he invented a lot of stuff. It wasn't all just explosive and weapons. He also patented other stuff like... Dildos. Uh, yes. No. <laughs> uh, artificial silk and types of leather. There you go. For d- for for dildos for dildo leather dildos. Mm. Well, I mean, easy to keep clean. Is that right? Leather. No. You don't Is think leather so? hard to clean? Well, no. I don't. Once it's been in there, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> in where? Where do dildos go? I've, I've never known. <laughs> where do they live? <laughs> what do you do with them? They look fun. <laughs> uh, so he, he invents a lot of stuff. He's also. Bit, bit, had a, a bit of a strange personality. This is uh, taken from the Encyclopedia Britannica article on him. Nobel's complex personality puzzled his contemporaries. <laughs> Although his business interests required him to travel almost constantly, he remained a lonely recluse who was prone to fits of depression. He led a retired and simple life, yet he could be a, cu- a courteous dinner host, a good listener, and a man of incisive wit. He never married and apparently preferred the joys of, in- of inventing to those of romantic attachment. Though Nobel was essentially a pacifist and hoped that the destructive powers of his inventions would help bring an end to war, his view of mankind and nations was quite pessimistic. Michael Frandy sang that song about him. You can't bomb <laughs> the world to peace. <laughs> I only sang the second half of the quote. This yeah, time. that was a bit confusing. I was waiting for more, but then for I realised what you'd done. Yeah. No, I appreciate that. that efficiency. Right, so he's, he's, he's quite um, contradictory yeah, in lots of ways. Yeah, a bit of a complicated individual. Do you know what, though? 
Here's a bit of a hot take from me. I love it. And we know my strength is emotional intelligence. I would have thought your strength was your legs. Oh, it's 100%. Physically, yes. Physically. Mentally, my strength, emotional intelligence. Okay. I get people. A lot of your emotion I- is in your legs, though, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. When you're trying to get... <laughs> if you uh, get into a sort of an emotional argument with someone, it's normally a leg lock that um, yeah. brings back a, about a resolution. And when I'm upset about something, I stomp <laughs> yeah. like a toddler. But what I'm trying to get to, Matt, uh, is that people y- are complicated. Oh, I thought you were going to say you can't stomp a toddler to peace or something like that. Oh, you can definitely do that. Oh, okay. But people are complicated. That's what I want to say. Oh, yeah. people are complicated. So, you know, we're reading understand. this about him like, oh, a couple of his behaviours contradict one another. Yeah, he's a person. Oh. You know, some days I want to go to a party, chat to so many people. Other days, oh, yucky. I'm staying at home right. in my pyjamas, uh, thanks. Fortunately, you are rarely invited to parties. <laughs> yeah, it's quite infrequent now. So when they do come up, I'm usually too nervous to go. <laughs> I don't I don't even... W- what do you do? I don't remember. What, what do I do you, with my hands? Uh, <laughs> where do I look? The floor. Always look at the floor. Stand in a corner, look at the floor. Don't touch any food. Yeah. Or if you, if you touch one bit of food, touch it all. Yeah, that, that is real. <laughs> one in all in. Yeah, I'm an all that. or nothing kind of gal. If you turn the lights on, turn them off and on and off and on again. <laughs> until you're Party asked, rules. Until you're asked to leave. Yep. Uh, when in doubt, just run the kitchen tap for an hour, mm. staring into the stream, muttering under your breath. What do you mutter? Some kind of hex. Oh, yeah? <laughs> on like the party. It. Oh, yeah. That's how you get invited This back. is how you hex. You stare into the water, you go, fuck these guys, fucking jerks, hope they all die. That's how you do it. Mm. See you next month. <laughs> What, at a party? Just imagine you're a party. Am I like going to monthly parties? Or a book club party or oh something? Oh my God, it's exhausting. I've got to get new outfits. <laughs> Can't wear the same outfit to the, <laughs> to, to the party. I'll say people say it. They'll say, does she only have one outfit? They'll say. That's what they'll say. Yeah, they'll say that. <laughs> I've said it. I've said it. Dave, please do go on. Uh, the so phrase that I invented. I mean... The audacity of that. I've got the, it'll be in a chat or an email or somewhere. I can if you can track it, it down. I've got the original note where I wrote down the potential ide- names for the pod. And you've got one added in with brackets. Matt offered this <laughs> one. <laughs> Don't know how I feel about yeah, it. I'd I prefer that? it all starts with a question. But I'm yeah. being diplomatic and letting Matt make suggestions too, yeah, before right, I Matt. steamroll. Do go on. Yeah, good one. People accidentally say do goon all the time. I probably... I've I reckon I would have said, uh, we would have talked about this before and I would have mentioned this before as well, but initially Stupid Old Studios came from Stupid Old Man, the sketch group we were in, and one of the suggestions on that, maybe even the second most popular option was, this is a door. <laughs> That's good stuff. So you would, your production company would be called This Is A Door? I think that was, that was an option. Wow. Who suggested that? Andy, I think, suggested all of them. Andy from Two in the Think Tank. How we normally work as a group is Al and Andy have great ideas. Evan figures out how to do them. Beck makes them better. And I sit there nodding along. Yeah. <laughs> going, yeah, I agree. And well this done. Is, and this is the man that thought of the title Do Go On. Yeah. That's kind of I saved my best stuff for us. <laughs> yeah, thank That's you. That's kind of how this podcast works, except I'm the Matt. You know, I'm the mat of the pod. I did not see you going self-deprecating there. Really? <laughs> what a twist. Yeah. What I try mean? to keep that off pod. <laughs> <laughs> On pod, arrogant asshole. <laughs> off pod, so sad. Oh. Can't go to parties. Can do I have more beer, please? On. Just give me a little bit. Dave, do go on. I'll quietly do this and listeners at home won't know. Okay, because no, this is an important part of the story. We're getting to the Nobel Prize now. I an often told story that is debated... But could be a reason that he established the Nobel Prize goes a little something I like this. Okay. Crack that mother effing beer. Oh, Matt's having a s- beautiful pour. Oh, picking that up. Thank you. This is the story. In 1888, Alfred's brother Ludwig. Oh, yes. Wow, his brother got the better names, Emil and Ludwig. Yeah, they're good stuff, isn't it? He died, uh, died while staying in Cannes in France. French newspapers reported Ludwig's death but confused him with Alfred. Oh. And one paper sported the headline, Le Marchand de la Mort est mort. Okay, the merchant of death is dead. 
referring to the fact that Alfred had invented so many explosive and weapons of death throughout his life. This was apparently relayed to Alfred, who started to consider his legacy. Ah. So he decided to make some changes to his will. I'm going to make a change <laughs> for once in my life. Who Is that you, what Michael who Jackson are you was talking about? Who are you quoting? Michael Jackson? Yeah. It's a bit off, off colour. No, I'm just saying that Michael Jackson wrote that song about Alfred Nobel. Yeah, maybe also. Mm. Looking at the man in the mirror. Mm. I'm looking at a man exploding things. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it does make oh sense. Oh, my then. God. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> mm. So he changes his will in something, and this is something that surprised his family, friends, and also the general public. Alfred died in 1896 at a villa in Italy at the age of 63. At the time of his death, his personal fortune was estimated in today's dollars at nearly $300 million US. Whoa. Whoa. Dollars. That is so much money. And his will stated that he wanted to leave the majority, upwards of 95% of the fortune, to establish awards that would be known as the Nobel Prizes. I would take 1% of that. Mm. Happily. Really? I'd you'd take any percentage you'd of it you'd if take someone was offering me free money. You'd take $3 million. <laughs> yeah, I would. Honestly, no, that no is shit. Big. No that shit. Is big of you. I would do it. I can't believe it. I would take it. I'm looking if at you like was, a different person. If right someone now. was like, hey, I have $300 million, I'd be like, that's so wonderful. Good for you. I hope you use that well. And then they went, do you want 1% of it? I'd be like, I if couldn't. I, if no. I have to. If you, I couldn't have another bit. No, 1.1, I, th- th- one point one, I shan't. 1%, okay. I'll take it off your hands for a bit. That's what I'd say. If it helps. If you want me to, if that if it matters, if it would make you happy, if you it can't be that bad. <laughs> if you, if you, if, I mean, if <laughs> if it would help your plight, yeah, your plight. If it's burning a hole in your pocket, honestly, if you're just paying that in tax anyway. Oh my gosh, let me take that <laughs> off your hands. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Let me relieve you of this burden. Mm. You're a big man. I'm a big man. The, probably the biggest. Thank you. By taking the smallest chunk. Mm. Well, he wanted the prizes to reward those who served humanity and also become his real legacy. And i got to tell you, what an incredible PR move. Yeah, huge. 125 years later, here we are. When someone says Nobel, you think of the Nobel Prize. You don't think of all the people his inventions killed at all. No yeah, one talks about also, that anymore. Also, why, why do you give a shit about your legacy after you're dead? Yeah, that is interesting. I guess it's back in the day. Well, I mean, that's the, the people who strive for big stuff are always obsessed with legacy. They're always people who are a bit off, right? Yeah. People who end up being prime ministers or premiers or presidents, they're mm. always about, they want a bridge named after them or something. Every, every, <laughs> the even. The ultimate recognition. A well, uh, honestly, that they'll do anything. Like in Melbourne, premiers will always have some big pro- uh, project. Jeff Kennett had the exhibition centre. Um, you had, Brax had, uh, one, I think he was the one who changed it to Southern Cross Station. It didn't need a name change, but uh, people want... They go, I did that. It was called this Spencer Street Station because it was on Spencer Street. But mm. I thought, you know what? For some reason, I'm going to change that name. Yep. It's yeah. It, I mean, this show was, was called It Starts With a Question until Matt came along. Yeah. That's my legacy. That's your the legacy. Premier. That's my legacy. That's your legacy. Yeah. The premiere of the pod. But it, yeah, it isn't an interesting thing, but people want to have things... Yeah, but obviously it worked for him a lot. Because, yeah, the Nobel Prizes, that's what people think about. And if I think Nobel Prize, the first one I think of is Peace Prize. And it was only relatively recently that I heard that he wasn't the most peaceful guy. And I mean, it was so, I think it was two, three minutes ago (laughs) that I learned that he was actually a warmonger, basically. Yeah, making a lot of money off war. Hmm. Uh, The executives of his will will formed the Nobel Foundation to take care of Nobel's fortune and organise the award of prizes. Again, quoting from Britannica. In his will, he stipulated that four different institutions, three Swedish and one Norwegian, should award the prize. From Stockholm, the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences confers the prize for physics, chemistry and economics. And the Karolinska Institute confers the prize for physiology or medicine. And the Swedish Academy confers the prize for literature. The Norwegian Nobel Committee, based in Oslo, uh, confers the prize for peace. Oh, nice. Yeah. So that's the one awarded in Norway. Are right. Norway known for peace too? What are they like? Norway. What else? What, what, yeah, what, when you think Norway, what do you think? Norwegian wood. Oh, yeah. Oh, Beatles song. Fantastic. Yeah. 
I uh, like that one. I like to harmonise to it in the car. Think what I think of it. Th- extreme Gibson? heavy metal. Oh, okay. okay. Similar. Yeah, but I, yeah, what? Uh, I know very little about Norway. I'm realising. Is Norway no Finland? What's the fjord? Pl- big fjord play? Is that Finland? No, Norway's got the fjords. Fjords. Yeah, all across that region. I think of, yeah, Henrik Ibsen, the playwright. Oslo is the capital, is it? Yeah. Oslo. What do you think when you think Oslo? Great name for a city. It's one of my favourite city names, I reckon, Oslo. Yeah. It's pretty good. Do we have any Norwegian listeners there? Yeah. Yeah, we met some in London. Yeah, and it it made an indelible mark on, on me. Yeah, fantastic. I think about them all the time. Great people. Shout out to those great people. I love them. We met. We have Norwegian listeners. Yeah, they came to our show in London. Do you remember meeting them? Yeah, I remember oh them. yes, I do little, remember them. They gave us chocolates. Yeah. Oh yes, they were the best. They were so nice. What a piece of shit I am. Yeah, but we've always said that, and they know that too. Yeah, that's fine. They so like you for it. Listening, they're, they're like laughing, going classic Matt. Um, but you know, they're used to it. It's okay. Yeah. Everyone knows. So anyway, that's pretty cool. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't know that. Yeah, so they're all presented in Sweden except for the, the Peace Prize, which is in, uh, awarded in, in uh, Norway. And so that they're not even done like in one big ceremony. They're done separately. Uh, yeah, well, th- I think they're all awarded on the same day. But da yeah. na na na. <laughs> but what if you're up for both? What if you've written a really good book and cured cancer? Some people okay, have. Okay, yes, I'm <laughs> listening. <laughs> Some people have. <laughs> My, My ears, ears are burning. <laughs> <laughs> My ears are exploding. That's one of his as well. Yeah, exploding ears. Uh, this is one of my notes where I put a note in for that for people who want to do pub trivia and do well. That is often asked in what country is the Nobel Peace Prize Award and everyone always writes down Sweden because they're like, oh, all of them are. That's the odd one out. So remember nice. that. Peace, peace Prize. Peace Norway. Norway. Oh, so you can... Is the question where are each of them awarded? Well, sometimes people just ask, where is the Nobel Peace Prize awarded? And everyone just writes, well, they're all awarded in Sweden. Right. But they're not. That's an like asshole <laughs> question. <laughs> yeah, it is. You know, but it's the point of trivia. It's frequent, isn't it? To be an asshole. Yeah, the point of trivia is for the trivia host to go... <laughs> yeah, that's an asshole. That's a bad trivia night. When Yeah, I hate those ones. You well, like them to be really easy questions. No, just like you know it or you don't, not sucked in fuckhead. Yeah, I do hate that actually. Because it's like, you know what, we all have gaps in our knowledge. Well, now I'm yeah. telling people so they do know it and they right. don't not know any it. So Dave's w- not doing that. Any of those come to mind? Any other ones? Oh, I mentioned Dave, is, you, you must be one of the... The trivialist buffs. Maybe we've got one listener who's maybe even more superior than you. I did more was not required there. Even is more su- is superior to you. Jesus. Who from the chase? Oh, fantastic! Of course, yes. Uh, Bryden Coverdale. What a guy! And he's also a really great cricket tweeter. Yes, yeah, funny, fantastic. insightful. Yeah, great, great, great to have you listening to the show. And uh, he's the. On uh, the Australian version of The Chase, the fantastic game show. and uh, Which Dave and I used to work for. Plays the shark. Uh, can, uh, he has to keep moving or he dies. Can I go backwards? I don't think they can. Or am I thinking of emus? Bryden is turning his grave right now. Because <laughs> that is not true. That's Isn't a myth. It? What, about sharks? Or about no, emus? No, Bryden's not dead. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I guess it, back to the Nobel Prize. It took a few years to get organised, partly because the Nobels, uh, the family of Nobels were taken by surprise when his will dedicated most of his money to the prize. They all thought they were going to get lots and lots of money from, oh, from Uncle. Oh, that sucks. Some relatives even contested the will. I hate so people. So it took years, because it's $300 million. People do not let that go easily. Uh, yeah, that is a lot of money, but at the same time, it's like, stop fighting a will. You know, that feels fucked. Yeah. That's so gross. That's really fucked up. So the pri- then again, my parents are pretty poor, so... <laughs> Your parents aren't worth $300 million. No. First I've heard of it. So, it, when they go... Wait, but I make fun of you all the time for being from rich families. I know, families. I go along with it, but... Uh, the butler's poor. pantry? They listen. They're not poor. You guys are doing great and I love you. But we're not getting much, you know? I'm so sorry to shout I that. really hope that they are s- spending your inheritance and that's all it is. I hope so, too. Because they're secretly... Got three hundred and thirty million dollars <laughs> in the bank, and they they're at home going, yeah, okay, Jess, we can give you one percent of that's all you need. Yeah, no problem. You can have one percent of your inheritance, <laughs> no worries. So it took ages to get to get it happening. They had to form a committee, all this stuff. People contested the will, lots of court stuff. The prizes were first awarded in nineteen oh one on December tenth, the fifth anniversary of Nobel's death, a date they continue to be awarded on. Right, so okay. it is the anniversary of his death, November tenth. Remember, uh, December, remember. December. The 10th of December. 
<laughs> that is the worst rhyme. I know, it sucks. Because it works for everything. Yeah. It works for them all. <laughs> that, is, that is nearly always Rem- Meredith weekend, 10th of December. That, that's the same week. Remember, That's remember. why I always miss it. 26th of August. It works yeah, for it all works. of them. Remember, remember, 13th of March. Easy. Easy, done. Next, whatever. Bored. <laughs> uh, the first prize for peace went to the Red Cross co-founder, Henry Dunant. Hmm. German Wilhelm Rontgen won the first Nobel Prize in physics for his work on x-rays. And I believe uh, Rontgen is a, a measure for x-rays or radioactivity. Yeah, Rontgen's. in fucking... Um, Chernobyl. In Chernobyl, they talk about that, do they? Yeah, Rontgen. I'm sure they do. Yeah, yeah. I think I, I remember talking about that on now. Because it's a lot of episode. Rontgen. There was a comment on our Chernobyl episode on YouTube recently, like, "Why are you laughing about this?" Like, "Oh, we're not laughing about that." No, we're laughing about Megatron. There's a giant horse that wears a cape. Ad- adjacent to the fucked up story, we're never laughing at the fucked up stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Unless it's funny, fucked up. You know. Yeah, it's different. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, who else won awards? Uh, Emil, this is some of the European names. Emil von Bering won the prize in medicine. Was Emil a popular name at any point? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Emil. Emil. I quite like it. Emil. I'm into it too. I just, <laughs> I've, I've never heard Emil twice in a day before. <laughs> right. <laughs> and you've kept a, a chart of that every day yeah, for your whole life. I, I have. How many meals before you go to bed every night? How many meals did I eat? Today? A lot of people eat three round of meals a day, but not me. <laughs> <laughs> not me. <laughs> Look, honestly, these passion fruit gozers are making me say things I don't want to say. <laughs> <laughs> Putting words in your mouth. Terrible pun-based words. And finally, I just wanted to get to this guy, Dutchman Jacobus Henricus Henry Van. Hoff Jr. Oh my yeah, gosh. that's good. Is he a Patreon of ours? <laughs> <laughs> he won the first prize in chemistry and also the award for best name ever. Yeah, yeah that wow. is a sick name. That's great. Jacobus Henricus Henry Van Hoff Jr. Yeah, that's Russell Crowe played him. <laughs> yes. Yep, wore a little metal skirt. Yep. That's good stuff. Uh, one of the reasons the award carries such prestige is that there is considerable process in selecting the win- in the winners. Again, reading from Britannica, it's got a fantastic article, article which I will link to if you want to read more. Uh, th- although the winners are announced in October and November, the selection process begins in early autumn of the preceding year when the prize awarding institutions invite more than 6,000 individuals to propose or nominate candidates for the prizes. Talking northern autumn, I'm guessing. Yep, yep. So what's that, our spring? Our spring. So, p- almost as soon as the prize is awarded, they start on next year's. Right. Some 1,000 people submit nominations for each prize. That's not as many as I would have expected. Really? Okay. And the number... Surely it's easier now with, like, online applications. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Back in the day, I had to carry a pigeon this shit in. I'm going to put myself in for peace. And I've put myself in for pasty guy. <laughs> <laughs> link below. <laughs> Do not vote using the link below. Vote, please. It'd be pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> what would you do with the ten grand? <laughs> I'd I'd split it with you, Jeff. Fuck yeah. Fifty fifty. If I went at fifty fifty, with well, Jess. none of us are going to win it. The baby man's going to win it now, thanks to you. I reckon we can get Matt to win. <laughs> <laughs> Jess and I split it fifty fifty. <laughs> I want five grand. <laughs> Dave, bullshit. Dave wants to use his money to take himself on a trip to two continents. Yeah, to eat fucking pies because I actually care. None of the people in this competition care about pies. It's some dad. Dave, it's a dumb thing to care about. I've just realised about peace. That just doesn't actually come from millions of dollars. But you ha- have not said anything of the sort, and you're begging for more. Please, a bigger piece of the already large pie. <laughs> you don't understand exactly. The more pie, the better. You get me <laughs> now. Thank you. Uh, Jess and I are going to share our meagre pasty mm. earnings of yeah. the ten thousand dollars. Yes. No one's going to win it. You just cost me. You just cost me ten grand. <laughs> Vote for Dave first. I don't want him to have a bloody blur. And then. <laughs> Chuck and one then away. Chuck one away. <laughs> but one thing we're definitely not doing is giving the baby man any love. No. No, baby man sucks. But if you. if you can find if any anyone from Anonymous is listening, somehow take away votes from baby <laughs> man. <laughs> <laughs> we are inviting I don't know how the internet we're works. We're inviting Anonymous to take away votes from baby man. <laughs> I know they like to take on some pretty big projects. But it just that a video shows up on your screen. Hello, baby man. <laughs> you know what you did. 
<laughs> oh dear. I just want, I just want to win something. Well, well you can it. have the Nobel Prize. Oh, actually, no. Sorry. D- don't, don't you. Why would no- you give that to me and then take it away? Well, don't. No- what I wanted to say is, don't nominate yourself because self-nomination automatically disqualifies the nominee. I love that. You got to be humble. Yeah, you can't. But you could also just turn to your partner and be like, "Can you please nominate please, me?" Like, and please. as if. You know, like it's so easy to just ask somebody that you trust who won't judge you. How do you win peace prize? Because it feels like I have not started a single war, and I've been around for a long time. I haven't done any. <laughs> we will get to that in a second. <laughs> well, the um, the names of the nominees cannot be revealed until fifty years later. But the Nobel Peace Prize Committee does reveal the number of nominees each year. The record was 376 candidates in 2016. And then it's voted for by people in their field. So, so it is expert. Right. That's why it's so prestigious because it's people who should know about your field talking, uh, right. picking who's, who's the best. Who's in the, in the field, field of peace? Other p- previous winners. And John Lennon. Like yeah. Michael well, Franti. So the name of the no- nominees aren't. Mentioned for 50 years. So does that mean you don't know if you're nominated? Ever? You no, know, yeah, because yeah. you've asked your partner to do it. Yeah. No, you c- I have actually heard of some people being rung up in the middle of the night because they're not in Europe, answering the phone and thinking it's a prank when they said, hi, you've just won the wow. Nobel Prize because they didn't tell them in advance. And they're like, what? And, you know, these a lot of these people... You could die not knowing you were nominated. Well, you probably d- will die because I'm assuming people aren't being nominated at 10 years old. So they're already fully grown adults. And then 50 years later, it's like, oh, okay, so this is who was nominated 50 years ago. But those people are dead. It's, like it's a nice, like, nice thing to learn for the grandchildren or something. Maybe. Oh, grandma was nominated for the Peace Prize. That's cool. Cool. 10 years. Keep the mystery. There's going to be some... Know. Embarrassing ones down the line, I think. Yeah. I reckon every Australian Prime Minister's got someone to nominate them for the Peace Definitely. Prize. Oh, come on. <laughs> wow, oh. that's, that's fascinating. Yeah, and, and there are also many rules to follow. Prizes ca- uh, may only be given to individuals except the Peace Prize, which may also be conferred upon an institution. We're an institution. Oh, yes, and we have been sending peace abroad. Honestly, guys. And domestically. Guys, I everyone listening, just like... Just be good to each other. And yeah. Oh, good point. Yeah, I agree with that as well. Do people realise that the subtext of this show is peace? Yeah. Do but go on. Peace fight. We don't want to say it. Yeah, obviously. That's what we're saying. We Go with peace. Yeah, go with peace. We're all about taking the peace. Thank you. We're, we are always... Mu- you look at the camera when you regret taking the peace. It's been a real bad show for me. <laughs> no, I think it's one of your best. You and I have different views though. And we still get along peacefully. Thank you. I'm sorry, everybody. I've got sw- oh, sweaty <laughs> mic. Is that sweat? Is that sweat? Yeah. I don't. This is that we very rarely have to hold mics for the show. That is so dis- That's clammy as shit. Yeah. You've ruined so peace for me. No, but I'm so sorry that I went to shake your hand. Show us your mic hand. Oh, no am clam. I a freak? Oh, you're wearing a t-shirt. Yeah, I took my jumper off because I got too hot. Yeah, look at Dave's glimmering. Yours was dripping, mate. All right. Gross. Dave, do go on. I'm sorry. Gross, soggy boys. An individual may not be nominated posthumously, so as soon as you die, that's it for you. You can never win. Oh. No matter what you did in life. But a winner who dies before receiving the prize may be rewarded it posthumously. This has happened so far three times. Once in 1961, uh, 1931, and then uh, Ralph M. Steinman for phys- Physiology or Medicine in 2011. The committee weren't actually aware that Steinman had died when he was named the winner. So that when they inquired to give him the prize, they found out that he was dead. Oh. And because that's against the rules, they were like, oh, we stuffed up. So they gave him the prize anyway. Right. So his family got the prize. Did you notice the coincidence there? Th- 316121, 2011. Yeah. That's interesting. There you go. Numbers that end in one. Well done. What's the, the the pattern there? I got it. Winners receive a gold medal, a diploma, basically a certificate, which is the most prestigious part. Oh, yeah. And also sweet, sweet cash. There's a lot. He did not die a rich man for nothing. In 2017, the laureates were awarded a prize of 9 million Swedish kroner, what? which is just shy oh. of 1 million US dollars. Wow. So you get a lot so, of money. So there's 6 million given away every year. So... That's just earning interest, or are they also yeah. getting donors and no. So it is based on. So there's a committee set up, which is basically a business, and they invest the money. And the money actually changes slightly every year depending on how much money is. What in are the they kitty. investing in? Yeah, I'd love the peace prize to be funded by 
I wouldn't love it, but the irony would be delicious. Um, wow. But it, are you going to talk at all? Because I believe like some of the winners for the Peace Prize have been questionable. Pretty. Yeah, I'm going to go through each prize classy. and a few of the famous winners and stuff. That's uh, so much money. So it's a million. Sometimes two winners are named, and very rarely three for the same sort of. Uh, invention or discovery, right? And then you have to split it evenly, right? Did you but know one year the winner was you? <gasps> Are you talking about Time Magazine Time Person magazine, of the Year? <laughs> Time Magazine Person of the Year. <laughs> one year it was the personal out. computer. What a cop <laughs> out! And it was like the covers like a mirror or something. Yeah. You. Yes, yes. Question. Do they have question, from <laughs> question from the back? Uh, question without notice. Do they please. have to use that money? For like to continue with their work, or is it just Absol- like theirs? Absolutely, uh, much like the pie competition, you can spend the money whenever you want. You can spend like it on splitting something it with a good friend. No, you can spend it on something dumb. For example, a trip to Africa and South America to eat a pie on a mountain. Mm. Yes. Yep. You can spend your half on anything you like. Thanks, Matt. But maybe we'll spend it on the people who voted for us. I'm not saying we will, but maybe we will. Maybe we will vote for us. A vote for Jess and Matt is a vote for peace. A vote for Jess and Matt is a, b- a vote for Baby Man. Let's be clear about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, occasionally, this will not be happening if any of us win. The prize has been refused by the winner. Oh, oh I love, that. Adolf, love Hi- that. Adolf Hitler forbade three Germans. Richard Kuhn, or Kuhn, in uh, chemistry in 1938. Adolf Buttendant in <laughs> chemistry in 1939. And Gerhard Domacht, who won for physiology or medicine Domacht. in 1930. Mm. That's good. Got him. Uh, he, all, those, all three of those, he said, you can't accept these prizes. Why? Because he was jealous. He wanted it. Yeah, he, he, he went to Eva Brawley. He was like, why didn't you nominate me? <laughs> that was my accent. So in this report, you've named two different Emils and two different Adolfs. The yeah. Adolfs were in the same sentence. <laughs> they were in directly involved Can with I one Can I just another. say that pre-World War II, Adolf, I imagine, was a much more popular name. Yeah, after it's that. It's kind of been tainted for a bit. Like for a bit. Th- like the first name, Michael Jackson. You can't use that anymore. Can't have Michael Jackson anymore. Isn't there, like, wasn't one of the actors in Black Panther named Michael Jackson? No, Michael, Michael Johnson. Michael B. Jordan. Michael B. Jordan. I knew it was one of the famous MJs. Me, Michael J. Fox, Michael Jordan, distant fourth now, Michael Jackson. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so those three people were banned by Hitler. From My middle name's James. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know that. I call you MJ. Yeah. MJ number three is what I call yeah. him. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, Jordan number one. Yeah. Michael J. Fox number two. And, oh, okay, yeah, you're number four. My brother's also MJ. Sorry. What the? And I call him MJ. You put your brother ahead of me. Yeah. Oh, because your parents are listening. You don't want them to know that you don't exactly. really like him. <laughs> I don't want them to know I don't like him. <laughs> so I forgot that was a secret. Yeah, it's a secret that I don't like him. Oh, this bit's getting edited out. <laughs> <laughs> it certainly isn't. Um, <laughs> so those three people were banned from Hitler from re- receiving their awards. Why? After th- after the war, they got their diplomas and medals, but they did not receive the prize money. Why did he say they couldn't have How it? How pissed off would you be? I'd want oh, the they p- got the medals, but not the cash. They said, Sorry, you weren't here to get the cash. We've reinvested it. I would take the money over a medal any day. Really? Just you take a million dollars over a medal? Hmm. You think you know someone? I never wear my... I've got so many medals, and mm. I just never wear them. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Run it comes Melbourne. It comes to every time I go to uh, clear out my wardrobe, I hold them, and I'm like, oh, do they spark joy? Yeah. Yes. Cash does. Cash does. Medals? Medals. Mm. It wanes. Mm. Damon wanes. Bruce wanes. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't make any sense. You sure we're not editing any of this? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been going for a long time, hasn't it? <laughs> uh, two Nobel laureates, John Paul Sartre in 1964, who won for literature, and Lee Duc To, who won for peace in uh, 1973. Duc To! They, uh, they declined their awards. So they weren't told that, unlike the three German guys who were told they couldn't accept it, these people actually said no. Sartre declined the award as he declined all official honours. Oh, he's a bit anti-establishment. And uh, Lee declined the war due to the situation in Vietnam that he was involved in at the time. Right. So, imagine that. You've got a lot of money on the table in that situation. You've got to stand up and say, no, thank you. Uh, The Nobel Prize, as I mentioned, uh, for peace is the only prize awarded outside of Sweden. And that is because 
Uh, when Nobel was alive, Norway and Sweden were united under one monarch. Ah. Uh, so we split them between the two. The International Committee of the Red Cross has received the Nobel Prize three times. Cool. More than any other. But the Peace Prize has been the most uh, controversial of all the prizes, as Matt was alluding to before. Right. Some uh, strange people have been nominated. Joseph Stalin from the Soviet Union, who killed millions and millions of his own people, was nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize in 1945 and 1948 for his efforts to end World War II. So, not a great guy. Adolf Hitler was also nominated once in 1939. As a joke. Oh, Oh, that's fucked. Do you have to pay to enter or do you just have to buy the TV week? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you have to. You get uh, texted an SMS code, you put it in, you're official. He was nominated by anti fascist and Swedish parliamentarian, a guy called EGC Brandt, who submitted Hitler's name as a satirical criticism. That is very satirical. Very I love satire myself. Do you love satire? I love satire. I love do you know what I love satire. more? Satirical criticism. Oh, yes. Thank you. My favourite. Mm. The reason is in 1939, British Prime Minister uh, Neville Chamberlain was nominated to receive the Peace Prize for his role in negotiating the Munich Agreement, which apparently uh, it's which ceded part of Czechoslovakia to Germany. Brand put Hitler forward for the prize, claiming that if Chamberlain w- could be nominated for talking Hitler out of a war, then Hitler should be nominated for not starting a war. He had to swiftly withdraw the nomination when it was actually taken seriously and people didn't get his joke. So Hitler was briefly nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize and then later that year started World War Two. Fuck. That is a good bit. Yeah, what that a great a bit. Very good You'd be bit. standing there going, guys? Guys? This is funny. Neville Chamberlain, he was a pretty, like, didn't he end up being a relatively unsuccessful PM for... I liked him in The Crown. Yeah, see the one that had to be... Uh, Replaced? He seemed, yeah, he, uh, I think he was in between Churchill and Churchill, mm. maybe. And he came back. Played by the fantastic John Lithgow. Oh, so you're going to say who played Chamberlain? I was like, wow, great memory. Chamberlain, the actor who played Chamberlain was so good as well. He was a fox. Ooh. I forget who he is, but he, he had a good mustache, look him up. He? What a fox. Okay. Honestly. That man, he commanded the stage and screen. Mm. <laughs> and mainly, hearts. The s- mainly the screen on that TV show, but I imagine stage as well. Yeah. At that stage of the show, he yes. commanded it. Yep. Yep. Thank you. Bit of quiet now. Thank you. Yep. Yep. Thank you. All right, Dave. Uh, Mahatma Gandhi, or Gandhi, was never awarded the Peace Prize, and this is viewed as probably the biggest oversight by the Nobel, uh, or people when talking about Nobel Prizes including some Peace Prize workers themselves, including the secretary of the Norwegian Norwegian Nobel Committee in 2006, who said, The greatest omission in our 160-year history is undoubtedly that Mahatma Gandhi never received the Nobel Peace Prize. Gandhi could do without the Nobel Peace Prize. Whether the Nobel Committee can do without Gandhi... That's the question. Oh, that is a good question. That's a great that question. Is a good and question. it does all start with a question. It does all it does start, start with a question. Fantastic title. Thank you. That um, was one of mine as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jane Adams was nominated 91 times between 1916 and 1931 by different people, and she was finally awarded the Nobel Peace Prize after that. But imagine that. 91 times. That's a Meryl Streep effort. People keep putting you forward. Uh, th- next up, we have the Nobel Peace Prize, uh, not the Nobel Peace Prize in literature, but just the Nobel Prize in literature. <laughs> it probably has the most household names. These are people well, that, that have you, won it. Well, book nerd. <laughs> yeah, honestly, I'm going to start with one that probably not that many people know, but Maurice Maeterlinck. Eugene O'Neill, who we mentioned last week on the Unabomber episode. Yeah, he, won he, he it. wrote yeah, Where's yeah. Wally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, the Ice Man Cometh and Long Day's Journey Tonight. Ernest Hemingway. Yep, George did uh, the Spot series. Uh, George, Ber- <laughs> George, George, George uh, Bernard Shaw. Uh, okay, yep. Uh, Postman Pat. Thank you. Uh, T.S. Eliot. <laughs> yeah, he wanker. <laughs> the name of a tism song. Uh, William Faulkner. Ah, Fork in the Road. Dog in the bone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <laughs> I will. I've got a few more to go. Okay. No? <coughs> Albert Camus. Oh, Camus, another. He comes up in a few Tism songs as well. The Outsider. Z, Z, Outsiders? Outsider. I think he's the Outsider. Uh, the Outsider. Uh, John- I, r- a fun fact, I read that book to impress a boy. <laughs> Come on, next. Was wow. the boy impressed? Tell us about the yeah, book. Yeah, was, success- so. was it successful? Uh, I made out with him. Oh, hell yeah. And then yeah, what happened? Camus. Um, 
Then he immediately made it. Hey, I just friend. read Camus. Hang on. No, no, Want to no. have a Camooch? <laughs> <laughs> Jess, I'm sorry. You just revealed something there. What happened after you met out with him? He made out with my best friend. Like oh. immediately after. Like turned around. Did you feel like a bit of an outsider? Nah, for some reason I was okay with it. What? I don't know why. Because it sounds like he was a bad Lovely guy. guy. Oh, lovely guy. Really like, great guy. Great guy. Anyway. Uh, John Steinbeck, Samuel Beckett, Bob Dylan, and Australia's only winner of the Literature Prize, uh, Patrick White. Bob, Bob Dylan? Bob Dylan won it a couple of years ago and it was very controversial. Very controversial. People, people, they were like, yeah, he writes poetry, baby. And people were like, absolutely not. Yeah, it was it was kind of it made the award a bit of a joke. And he also just didn't seem that keen on yeah. it. Yeah. I had no idea. Well, wow. you should read a book. I really should. So Bob Dylan won, but a Would bu- it impress a boy? You should read a book, something that Bob Dylan doesn't really do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he <laughs> doesn't read books? Doesn't lie to me either. He famously doesn't read books. <laughs> um a bunch of famous people missed out. So Bob Dylan's won one, but these people haven't. Leo Tolstoy, people oh. are like, Why the hell didn't he win? Yeah. Virginia wrote Woolf. Lord of the Rings. Oh. Virginia oh. Woolf wrote uh Werewolf of London uh, comes again. Uh, James Joyce. James Joyce obviously wrote uh, Up uh-huh. There Kazali, the song about footy. Uh, Marcel Proust. Proust. All, these are all, like, Tism have referenced all of these They're people. all very high-brow people. Mar- I, went to a, I went to a Tism concert and they, they had a, a host, a guy hosting a Save Our Tism telethon. And for whatever reason, they made his character... They named him Marcel Proust. I didn't get it at the time. I still don't get it. But bloody hell, that's funny stuff. Yep. That is good stuff. What has Marcel Proust done? Uh, famous for a very, very, very long book. What is it called? And it has a thing that's frequently referenced Madeline's in it, which is oh. the, which he uses as memory. What's it we called? We love our children. Yeah. We love our ghosts. We love our children. Let's have some toast. <laughs> for that Madeline... It's oh, yeah. so close. In Search of Lost Time, and it's like <laughs> thousands. It's 4,000 pages long. Oh, that's too long. That's a lot of pages. That's a lot of words. It's too many. If every page had one word, that's a long <laughs> it's book. It's too many. <laughs> yeah. Oh, let me just finish this list. I'm trying to get through it. Mark Twain, Gertrude Stein, and Henrik Ibsen, who I mentioned as the famous Norwegian, all overlooked. Winston Churchill was nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize, but was actually awarded one for literature, something that people often oh. get confused about with right. him. Right. Because he wrote some uh, very... Fanfic. Yeah, fan fiction. He loves fan fiction. Yeah, famous uh, diaries and uh, and um, right. biographies about his own life. Yeah, cool. We uh, will fight them on the beaches, etc. Is that one of his? Yeah, that's one of the John Lithgow. Uh, physics is the another prize. Mm-hmm. Einstein, probably the most famous winner of this, won in 1921. I've heard of him. A good year. But, um, and then there's <laughs> <laughs> physiology and medicine. Now, this medical-based award is given for phys- physiology and medicine. It's often awarded years and years after this discovery because it takes such a long time to figure out how revolutionary or successful Was a medical discovery is. the inventor yeah, sure. of penicillin a winner? Yes, Alexander Fleming. Marie Curie. I was talking about Marie Curie. Oh, sorry. I always confuse those two. <laughs> what did she do? She, she won two. She rode a horse to she won two three Nobel consecutive Prizes. Melbourne she? Cups or something. Yeah, <laughs> She won two, did she? Yeah, two different categories oh as well. What? Chemistry. Which I think is only two people. Th- it was one of those ones where, like, it's a, w- it's a weird range of topics. Like, s- some specific science ones that could easily have been the Science Nobel Prize. Sure. Like, there should be a Nobel Prize for science, and then one of those ones you've saved, a Nobel Prize for car racing or something. Right? Or yep. jumping... Bike really jumping high. over something. No, just standing. Jumping or a standing, a standing leap. A standing jump. Oh, standing jump. You should get a Nobel Prize for a standing. Have yeah. you seen that video of Bill Gates jumping a chair from the nineties? Exactly, he would have won. Fantastic one. video. They said to him, "Oh, I hear you can stand a, you can jump an office chair standing uh, fr- from, uh, you know, from standing up." And he goes, "Depends how tall the chair is." <laughs> That's and a great. That point. Quote is why he's the richest man in the yeah, world. No, you're absolutely I wouldn't right. have answered that way. Do you remember when he came in and closed down Homer Simpson's business? Oh, yeah. That was fun. Mm, we do. I didn't get rich by buying people up. <laughs> <laughs> so, physiology and medicine, that's the one where it takes the longest time. You discover something right. and then it comes back. To you actually get the prize. The average time is 20 to 30 years between discovery and award. Whoa. But sometimes it's longer. Peyton Roos had to wait 50 years to be awarded his prize on his work on viruses that cause tumours. 50, 50 years? 50 years after your discovery, you are recognised. And that sometimes, because it takes so long, people are awarded the prize and later we found out that their work was in fact bullshit. Oh. 
Edgar Moniz received the prize in physiology and medicine in 1949 for developing the now extremely discredited frontal lobotomy. Oh, right, which is still a famous phrase. Yeah. You need a frontal lobotomy. What a great put yeah. down. And there was a l- big period of time where people thought that that was the right yeah. thing to do. Now people are like, no, you are destroying someone's brain. Yeah, you're taking part of their brain And there's something about, I'd rather put a bottle in front of me than have a frontal lobotomy. <laughs> is that a thing? Sounds like a tism line, is it? No. I, don't I think it's a I think it's a... The Three Stooges or something. <laughs> wow, uh, that's insane. Yeah, sometimes they get it really wrong. Danish physician uh, Johan Fibiger, again, sorry sorry to the Europeans, uh, won the 1926 Nobel uh, Prize in Medicine for demonstrating that roundworm caused cancer in rats and mice. People were like, that's a big discovery. Wow, well, yeah. okay. Only problem was, it doesn't. Oh, okay. This was shown a few years later, but by the time Fibiger was dead, Due to cancer himself. Oh, oh he had roundworm. <laughs> well, most likely, Fibrogen specimens had died because they were fed a diet without any vitamin A. And that's why they developed this cancer. It had nothing to do with the species. The Nobel was never rescinded. But in 2010, an official with the Karolinska Institute, which is associated, mm-hmm. uh, admitted it was one of our biggest blunders that the Institute had ever made. Whoa. Wow. Well, and they cool. accepted a nomination for Adolf Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> and that was our uh, top ten biggest blunders. <laughs> Counting them down. <laughs> uh, unlike the Oscar statues that I mentioned on the Academy Awards episode, winners can sell their medals. Although this is incredibly rare. Physics winner Leon Lederman, who won in 1988 for his co-discovery of the muon neutrino, sold his Nobel earlier this year to cover medical care expenses, and it sold oh. for three quarters of a million dollars. You should be allowed to do that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I agree. But far out, that sucks. Mm. Well, is this more of a feel-good story? Russian billionaire Alicia Usmanov paid $4.7 million to buy the gold medal uh, Nobel awarded to biologist James Watson for his work deciphering DNA's double helix. Well, then he gave the medal back to the laureate. He said that the medal should remain with the winner and that the money he paid for it should go towards research. Oh, oh that's great. That's nice. Yeah. Wow. And uh, finally, the final prize is the economics one, which was first rewarded in 1969. <laughs> uh, nice. Nice. Yeah. nice. And it's been rewarded to different people since then. My uh, The favourite thing I read about this, as an economist, I'm sure, Robert Lucas... Winner of the 1995 Nobel Prize in Economics would be very annoyed by what happened to his and his finances. Oh, no. He had to split his $1 million prize money with his wife, who he divorced seven years earlier. Their divorce agreement stated, quote, wife shall receive 50% of any Nobel Prize. But the clause expired on October 31st, 1995. Had Lucas won any year after that, he would have kept the whole million dollars. What a specific clause. Imagine getting... You'd have to be confident that your I love the husband lawyers. or wife is pretty likely to but win something. But they also That's divorced amazing. seven years earlier. So if you're still bitter after seven years, like if I had put that in there as a little bit of a like a fuck you, like right at the right at the end of our marriage, right? If he won seven years later, I'd be like, oh, that was a bit of a piss take. You should probably keep that. But again, I'm a nice person. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think divorces seem to be a thing that can go a little nasty. Yeah, interesting. I've heard this. But also, like, half a million dollars. Yeah, true. I'd Maybe be, she I'd did deserve it. Like, some of that stuff, the point is that the partner was supporting them yeah. and giving them the possibility to do the work that earns them that stuff. The ones that an- I find annoying is when it's, like, Paul McCartney did all his work. Yeah. And then he had a divorce that cost him so much money when all that money and everything yeah. was made well before they even met. Yeah, yeah, that sucks. Sometimes before they were even born. <laughs> oh. With Paul McCartney? No, just rock and roll stars marrying young. In that case, fuck them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, finally, some f- possibly facts. I'll possibly decide. fun facts. I'll some decide. of them aren't fun, but they are... Just uh, to sum it all up, among the 892 Nobel laureates, this is definitely not fun, but it sort of highlights highlights something, only 48 have been women. Oh. Of the how many? 892. <laughs> oh, those aren't good stats. That's so bad, isn't it? Which is what, about 5%. Yeah, women, lift your game. Uh, the first woman... I say that as the feminist on this show, you know? Mm. You say that a lot. Lean in, win some awards. Lean in and win? Lean in and win. 
That's what the you say. The name of my, my book. <laughs> Buy it now online. Uh, the first woman to w- receive a Nobel Prize was, of course, Mara Curie, who was the only woman to oh, receive, receive a prize twice. Yeah. That's how good penicillin was. Were they she close together? She invented penicillin so nice, she was awarded for it twice. Did she, w- did she win them close to one another, the Nobel Prizes? Do you know? I think they were a few years apart, yeah, not yeah, nice. but not that long. And Same also category? Uh, no, two different categories. She's one of the only people Chemistry ever and... That. Uh, physics, physics. Yeah. right? And her daughter also won one. Wow, that's that's got to be their family is extremely impressive. So of the forty-eight, and she ref- and one of them the was Curies sh- have three. One of them was shared with her husband too, Pierre. So oh, that dog, wild. Uh, the awesome. av- you've got time, Jess. If you're wondering if you want to win this, because the average age of a Nobel laureate across all prize categories is fifty-nine years old. I got uh-huh. thirty years. Damn it. Yeah, sorry, Matt. Time's passed. Uh, to date, the youngest Nobel Peace Prize laureate is Malala Yousafzai. Oh, of course. Who was 17 years old when she won in 2014. That's pretty young, I guess. <laughs> the oldest Nobel Peace Prize laureate to date is Joseph Rotblat. Yep. Who was 87 years old when he, wa- when he won in 1995. The devil's number. Do you know that? 87. In 87. cricket it is. Is Th- it? 13 away from a ton. Oh. Right. Mm. There you go. That one's for you, Bryden. <laughs> Uh, this fact comes from scientificamerican.com. This is uh, when Joe Bardeen co-won the Physics Nobel in 1956. It says John. What did I say, Joe? Yeah. Stop reading over my phone. I can't help it. It's right in front of me. Are you reading along the whole time? I'm on Pretty a great much. angle. I can't see it at all. I'll look over here. Uh, when John but also Bardeen Dura, so. co-won the Nobel Physics Prize in 1956, he left most of his family at home rather than bring them along for the r- award ceremony. Quote, his son told me that his father wanted them all to stay in school and study for whatever test they had, explained Scientific American video editor Aline Organ Brown. Organ Brown. He was loath to take off... Organ Brown. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> yeah, we're so close to the end. Uh, he was loath to take time off work himself. The King of Sweden, who was at the, at the ceremony, noted the absence of his family and actually scolded Bardeen. The Nobel laureate promised the king, I'd, I'll bring them next time. Uh. Then, in 1972, Bardeen indeed won a second Nobel, making him the third person in history to win the prize twice. Wow. That time, he made sure to bring his oh, entire family. Oh, that's sweet. Isn't that nice? I like that the king is so family orientated. Yeah, yeah, telling someone off for that. Orientated? That's why he's the king. You're yeah. the king. <laughs> You're the, the king, king. king. <laughs> His name's King. You're the King, King, King. You're the King, King, King. Our uh, three laureates were in prison when they received the award. Yeah, right. Bad boys. All of them winners of the Nobel Peace Prize. The baddest of the bad. Yeah. Really? But you can be in. You can be peaceful, but then be in prison for fraud. Yes. Yeah. No, most of them are in prison uh, by people who are trying to oppress them. And right. They're actually getting the peace. Nelson Mandela. Them? Oh. Oppress them. Mm. Oh, pr- definitely heard impress. You need to enunciate. Yeah. I'm also being infected by these beers. <laughs> You're doing well. And final fact, yeah, I'm f- I'm sure Nobel, Alfred Nobel, that's it, that is, would be happy with his legacy. He went from murder, mm. murderer extraordinaire to Nobel Peace Prize. Yeah. Um, murderer or tunnel exploderer? Thank you. Mm. Tunnel to hell. Drain clearer. Yeah. Uh, but I'm sure he'd also be stoked that uh, the synthetic element Nobelium was also named after him. Yeah, element? Yeah, so that's pretty... Mine would be Boppium. Oh. Oh, Boppium is fun. Yeah. It It's the main chemical in bubbles. Whoa. Boppium. Boppium. <laughs> <laughs> no one had ever named the bubbles before. <laughs> we just call them bubbles. Yeah, bubbles. Yeah, but what's in them? Boppium. Oh. Huh. Um, Dave, can I just say all of those facts were fun? Thank you. Well wow. Thank you so much. That does bring us to the end of the episode. That was great. The Nobel Prize. It's a fascinating thing, really. Really isn't interesting, it? yeah. There are so many more things I could mention. Uh, there's a parody prize called the Ig Nobel that I'm sure people will mention if I don't mention it yeah. just briefly. Did you uh, did you mention who suggested this topic? Yeah. Yeah, me. Okay, Yusuf, Yusuf. from uh, That's Glasgow. That's right. Yeah. How could I forget me? Hey, got to give him another shout out because he suggested. So it was only ever topic. suggested once. Yeah, and That's this is amazing. Here's a little glimpse behind the curtain. Here I we remember go. starting to research this topic. Way back in the day, we'd probably be in single digits when oh I was wow. considering topics. And then it sort of slipped by. I put it up for the Patreon vote a couple of times. And at the moment, I'm on a free choice where people aren't voting for it. And I went, you know what? 
I we're gonna do it. I reckon this could be a fun topic. Yeah, that's great. Because yeah, because that that story about his first the first half of his life and that yeah how he rebranded and now people associate him with peace and I'm it's kind I'm of crazy. I'm amazed with how little I actually knew, but I just sort of knew of it and knew it was very prestigious. And, but I knew very little about how it actually works. I yeah. imagine that that's actually probably pretty true across yeah. the board. It's one of those things that's been around so long now. You accept the prestige, but never really think about yeah, why. Exactly. Well, that brings us to everyone's favourite section of the show. It is the fact, quote, or question fact section. Damn right. Quote or question. Widget the world <laughs> watcher. And this is the section of the show where Patreon supporters, uh, s- in particular on the Sydney Scheinberg Deluxe Rest in Peace Memorial Edition yeah. level. Ooh, rest yeah. in peace for sure. Uh, you get to give us a fact, a quote, or a question. You also get to give yourself a title. And this week, it's one of our uh, longest uh, serving supporters. That's not the right way to yeah, say it's that. Fine. Uh, Brian Colella. Brian! Who uh, travelled out from America earlier in the year to see us live at a few shows. He also. Very cool to meet him. He's been a guest on Primates before. And he's given himself the title. He's also been a guest on Two in a Think Tank. Very funny, oh clever man. Brian, his, shout out to you. His uh, title, self chosen, is. And this, he, I'm guessing he got in, what, what was the episode where we had the chat about how to pronounce mayor or maya or... Maya. Uh, maya. I, I don't know how It's that pretty recent, in the last two months. Yeah, it was an American, obviously... Maybe three months. Yeah, I can't remember why. Maya. Anyway, it's related somehow to what so he's said. Well, yeah, very related because the title he's given himself is, depending on how you pronounce it, Mayor, 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 or Mayor, 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 which I think is a bit of a play on Major, 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 Major from uh, that famous book, Dave. What am I? Uh, the Lord the of the Rings. No, the... what's, what's Fellowship the of the Rings. Major, Major... Return Major, of the King. Uh, Return of the Jedi. Oh, what is it? Bloody Star called? Trek. It's a, it's about the next it's a war it's a war novel oh. satirical Jeez. Catch twenty two. Catch twenty two, thank you. So and sorry. There's a character in it called Major, 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 maybe Major, 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 Major. And uh anyway, so that's funny already. It's good stuff. And his question is how would you pronounce Meralty? Hey, well, I guess that's yeah, how I would pronounce it. How would you pronounce it? Mayoralty. No, I'd say mayoralty. Meryl. Mayoralty. A bit like Meryl Streep. Meryl's Meryl-ty. Yeah, Meryl Streep. I'd pronounce it Meryl Streep. <laughs> Do you need... To, I should have... What I should have done was no, just I've, showed I've it to you. made my decision. Yeah, that's I'm how you would say it? Meryl Streep, yes. Meryl Streep? Meryl Streep. Well, there it is. I think you've got a pretty... Uh, so, one vote for Meralty and two votes for Meryl Streep. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for that <laughs> question. I hope that's all that you hope that would, would do there, Brian, your bloody legend. Thank you so much for your support. Amazing. Uh, he's He's been long-term the only supporter on that level. Whatever. What's that level called? It's even above the Sydney Shire. Sydney Shire, yeah. Anyway, d- very important and lonely level. <laughs> and thank you so much for supporting us on it. Thank you, Brian. Brian. You're, a, you're a great man. Maybe the greatest man. I'm going to nominate him for a Nobel Prize. Let's do a it. A Nobel one. Okay. How do you pronounce that? Nobel or Nobel? Nobel? Yeah, that's right, isn't it? <laughs> it's the doctor of podcasts, that level. Doctor of podcasts. Oh, we will. I mean, you really then, you should be called Dr. Mayor, 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 Brian <laughs> Colella. <laughs> Dr. Mayor, 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 Mayor. Yes. Thank you so much, Brian, you goddamn legend from Seattle mm-hmm. in Washington State. Mm-hmm. Now, the other section we like to do... The other favourite part of the show, let's be honest. Have we set this up? No, you have not. Now, if people want to support the show, they want to support the show like Brian does at the absolute top level or even at a very entry level, you still get you get rewards for every single uh, level of support. You go to uh, our Patreon page, patreon.com slash pod, and you get little rewards like voting for the topics, sort of deciding what the show talks about every every single week. You can be part of a Facebook group. You get uh, a lot of fun. I love getting in there. Some really, it's, n- it's, a, it's maybe the most wholesome corner of the internet. Oh I God, people bloody sweet. Can I believe how lovely people are? It it's, is uh, so, nice. so so nice. Uh, two bonus episodes every single month that no one else hears, and a bunch of other stuff like you hear about the live shows first. And another part of the thing is we uh, 
We shout out to some people. Yes, and I'd love to kick it off if that's okay Please. with you. Well, usually Jess comes up with a game though. Man. Oh, yes. I want to give them a Nobel Prize. Okay, new category? Yes. Oh, <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> okay. Fantastic. I love it. All right, well, I'll kick it off uh, from Cedar Rapids, which is one of my favourite place names. Yeah, big time. That's awesome. I've heard of it as well. I think there might even be a film called Cedar Rapids. Is that right, Dave? Can you Google that quickly? He's on it. From IA. What state would that would that be in Canada or America? It's in America, sorry. IA. Cedar Rapids is, is a that film. Iowa? I think it's a comedy film by um I've never seen it, but I want to. It's by maybe It is Iowa, yes. It is in Iowa and it's got Ed Helms in it. Ed Helms, but I think maybe it's it's by the McGruber guy, maybe. I might be wrong there. But I think it might be Saturday Night Live alum. Miguel Arteta? I'm way off. Sorry about that. But anyway, apparently a very funny movie. Maybe. Anyway, <laughs> Cedar Rapids in Iowa. I'd love to thank Devin Bruns or Bruns. Devin Bruns. Oh, Devin Bruns. Wow, okay, okay, okay. What's his Nobel Prize for, Bob? He's won the Nobel Prize in 2006. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Yep. A good few years, year. A few years back now. For... Inventing. Yes. Oh, wow. He's an inventor. Oh, for inventing. <laughs> <laughs> and what did he invent? He invented that um, the sponge stick. Yep. You know how you put the liquid in? Oh, in the top and then wow. It's a sponge Super worthy. We didn't have that Devin after Brunt. before 2006. Th- that changed so my life. the stem of the scrubber doubles as a stem mm-hmm. and a broom and mm-hmm. a... And a handle. Handle. And also... The vessel for the detergent. Yeah. My God, Devin Bruns. And it has nothing to do with the fact that just over your shoulder <laughs> is some washing detergent. Oh, what? oh that's d- amazing. What a weird coincidence. Can I, I just tip my hat to thee, Devin? Because that, that, that thing's changed my life. Big time. Yeah, fantastic. I don't have to touch dishes. Oh. Stupid Old Studios has one of those. And I feel like a bloody movie star every time I'm washing the dishes. Yeah. There. It's pretty glam. It's so <laughs> glamorous. I love watching the soap. Devin Bruns, well done. Thanks, Devin. Also, well done on the name Devin. Yeah, it's good. You may be, you're in my top three Devins now. Devin Sawyer is obviously in there. Uh, yes. Yep. And Devin Townsend. Of the course. The heavy the metal Canadian guy. Canadian heavy metal maestro. <laughs> the Devin Townsend project. Yes, but he also his solo album this year is a must. A must, simply must. Obviously, Strapping Young Lag, one of the... Great metal bands, but <laughs> he's <laughs> yeah. done a lot of fantastic work. Oh, yeah. My friend Thomas showed me that work. Shout out to you, Tom. I'm so sure good. you're listening. Their last album, Alien, is so... I mean, they're all. The, I think all their albums are great, but... Man, there's a lot of... De- I'm on the Wikipedia name for Devon. There's a lot of them on here. Good on you, Devons. Go, yeah. Devons. It's also a kind of meat slice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Devon. Can, yes. <laughs> uh, oh, so, no, uh, thank De- you so much, Devon Bruns. I'd also love to thank, from Dublin in... Ireland, Ugh, my we favorite ho- place. We hope to make it there <laughs> as a group one day. How? Stop me if I'm saying the most Irish name of all time. Connor Johnston. That is good. Connor, of course. Connor is the was doing a Quite lot of Irish, the Irish yeah. work. There. Johnston. Johnston. It's still good. Still pretty. It's great. Yeah. Dave, do you remember what Connor won the piece, the <laughs> Nobel Prize yep. for? Yeah. Canoe building. Oh, yeah. canoe building. He built the best canoe the world has ever known. Right. Yeah. Canoes were already invented. He won the, the best, just the best canoe. one. The best yeah. one ever. Right. It was a one time only prize. People were like, We've got to uh, we've got to And this definitely has nothing to do with Cedar Rapids being in your mind. This definitely has nothing to do with the fact that there is a canoe factory over your left shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> you dumb shit! You looked. That's a kettle, you moron. Yeah. Oh, oh, sorry. Is that what that? Sorry, in my language, it's called a canoe factory. It, yeah. You, did you think canoes were hot water? Yeah. <laughs> There's some like a man hot water. That is so. I did not even think of Cedar Rapids, but I'm sure that's why <laughs> the canoe Definitely. got on my mind. May Connor Johnson, so good. And if you're looking for Irish music, Connor, and I'm sure you are, check out. Oh, I've blanked on their fucking name. River Dance is what you think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Real Dave, I was just, r- I was, si- I was what I was listening to on the plane. If you're Dave. gonna, if you're gonna YouTube River Dance, look up Real Around the Sun. Oh, that's good stuff, isn't Pro- it? One of my favorite albums from this year. It's they're just a fun rock band oh, called serious. Fontaine's DC. Okay. So good. I reckon Diet Coke. They're probably my favorite all over pop show. radio in in Dublin, Ireland already, Connor. But if you don't know them, they're bloody good. They're making waves down here. 
Oh. In my pants. <laughs> May I also thank <laughs> some really people like and shut Please. you up? Yes. I would love to thank from Brighton in Great Britain, the greatest oh. Britain. Oh, Nick Cave Town. Bit of coastal territory. Yeah, I've a been. A couple there. of Poirot episodes set there. Yeah, they've got the they got the. It's sort of a bit of a. It's a beachy sort of getaway for Londoners. Mm. Well, it's not a getaway for this next person because that's their home. Whoa. I would love to thank William Hughes. Oh, oh. Hughes. Oh, Willie Hughes. Willie Hughes. Willie Hughes. Willie Hughes. Bill Great Hughes. Name. Bill Hughes, uh, an Australian Prime Minister's name, I think, was Bill Hughes. That's true, Billy Hughes. Billy Hughes. I think, is this? I'd say Bill Hughes won the Nobel Prize in 1969, the Summer of Love, mm. for mm. best smooching. <laughs> oh, wow. And there was so much smooching in that yeah. summer. So much. There was a lot of competition. I would describe it as wall to wall. Wall to wall. And he just he out smooched them all. In there. Oh, wow. Yeah. And everyone's going like, oh, I've had so many good smooches this summer. And then they smooch. And Billy Hughes. So it's best smooch rather than most smooches. Yeah, best smooch. Right. So he it could have technically only been one. Yeah. Yeah. One and done. But he smooched the right judge. <laughs> yeah. And they were oh. like, that was the best one. I don't need. I don't oh. need. Thanks, William smooch. Hughes. And hey, congrats on the smooching. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Well Fifty done. years later, you're still smooching. Still smooching. Yeah. Oh, that's that's what he yeah that's what he says every day. Wakes up, new day, new smooch. <laughs> that's what he says to his wife. Yeah, yeah. she's like, all right, and and then she says, all right, enjoy it, and yeah. he goes off and he smooches someone. Yeah, and then he comes home and she says, how'd you get to go? Did you have a good smooch? And he said, yeah, I did. I had a good smooch, and she, she goes, says, can I have a smooch? And he, he said, says, no, I no, do no, not no. bring my work home with me. <laughs> <laughs> it is not your birthday. Please, Sharon. Sharon, how dare you? You want one for free? <laughs> this is a Nobel Prize winning smooch right here. Oh my god! Imagine if you could say that. You'd get a tattoo. Would you? On your face. I Nobel Prize winning <laughs> smooch right here. Arrow, arrow to your mouth. <laughs> yeah, and then you'd never smooch again. <laughs> yeah, I'm never gonna smooch <laughs> again. Guilty, Guilty lips has got, got no rhythm. rhythm. <laughs> oh, lips shouldn't have rhythm anyway. Yeah, they should. Well, yeah. check this out. <laughs> my lips are kissing in three four. <laughs> Mine's a waltz. Dave, check this out. Oh, he's oh. showing us the lips. I Do it to the camera lips. and make people vomit at I home. I never will. I hate your stupid lips. <laughs> oh, we Can I thank someone out a else? Photo. Can I thank someone else, please? Yeah. Please. I want to get the image of Matt's lips out of my, fa- out of my mind. <laughs> oh, stop doing it. <laughs> I'd love to thank from Greenville. Oh, yes. SC. South Carolina. South Carolina. Oh, that reminds me of a fact. No. Greenville, no South Carolina. I would like to thank Ted Sanders. Oh, Hi, yeah. Ted. Teddy love Sanders. Ted. I love Sanders as well. I've got a cousin called Ted. Ted's great. I've got a cousin Brisbane, called Ted actually. as well. I should probably message him. Yeah. Well, let's have a quick break there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anyone called Ted and I'm feeling dumb. Ted Whitten? Yes. Tism Letton. have a, a track called the Ted Commandments and they go through <laughs> ten Ted's. <laughs> 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 That's very fun. Well, this Ted won the Nobel Prize in shortest short shorts. Yeah. Oh, I mean, cut-offs. that's already a pretty competitive field. Yeah, but he was inspired by a certain college basketballer, which we shall not mention for time. But um, There's simply no time. Ted Sanders, of course, are fantastically the shortest of the short shorts. 20 years later, they realised, embarrassingly, he was actually nude. <laughs> 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 in the brother. By that time, Ted was dead. So he was dead and he'd spent the cash. <laughs> he just had a tiny dick that no one could what? see. <laughs> <laughs> We're not saying that about Ted. He had it wrapped up his butt crack. <laughs> yeah, that's better. <laughs> now, we've got to give a big... Uh, I'd, love to <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to shout out to Ted, but also love to shout out to the good people of Brisbane. Jess, we were walking back to the hotel about a couple of hours ago. And what did you see a sign for what I believe was some sort of... Strip club, a sign that said, "What was the the dress requirement?" Oh, oh. Yes. <laughs> was it a strip club? I thought it was just like a pub. Oh, just a club. It it? Oh yeah, okay, maybe it was. It said Dave, not all clubs are, are strip, strip clubs. clubs. You can strip in any club though. <laughs> yeah, so not in this one. Apparently. <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> because apparently. it had a dress code, like a lot of places do, and it was. T-shirts, shorts, and closed shoes, minimum. <laughs> shorts on minimum clothes. <laughs> what else are you wearing? Brisbane, what are you like? <laughs> um, can I come into my speedo? <laughs> Mate, no. your dick's out. <laughs> if I can see your dick, 
you can't come in. The best part is that had to happen so many times that they had to make a sign. Yeah. Before that, they'd have to explain to people, but now they just tap a sign. sign. Yeah. And And the guy in Speedo just walks to the next pub and says, there's no sign there, mate. Yeah, Sack Out Saturday is obviously an exception. Of course. But yeah, but every other day. Which it is tonight, Sack Out Saturday. And yep. um, we are holding true to this glass table. Dave, would you like to thank some people? Uh, thanks, Ted Sanders. I would like to take us home by thanking from Rawlins, Wyoming. Oh, yes. Oh, oh fa- fantastic. We don't have that many... Wyomings. Wyom- Wyomingans? Wyomings. It, it is actually... Wyoming, I love it. It is a uh, fully... The borders of it are fully straight. So oh it's yeah, if you like a little box. It is a it is a box, and it as it's actually the least populous state. It has even less people than, of course, Vermont. Shout out to the my least populous state. state has even less population than Vermont. I just want to shout out to Vermont, which is the second. Okay. I don't, hey, the home I of the, the creamy, creamy, the creamiest creamies. Hey, but. Who are you thanking? Oh, worth, well, thanking, first of all, <laughs> Vermont for being the best. You're taking the long way around here. I would like to thank, from Wyoming, in Rawlins, Jacob Vello. Ooh, oh. Jacob Vello. Jacob Vello, Vello, who, of course, was awarded in 1972, if I believe. Am really? I Is that right, true? Matt? The Nobel Prize for what was it again? Oh, it was for Longest Hat. <laughs> <laughs> wow, he got the Nobel Prize for hat that yeah. year. Long- no, 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 not hat. Longest hat. How long are we talking? Height or width? <laughs> long brim. So it was basically, it was like a trough turned the other way around. <laughs> Can Put multiple people head. wear it at once? Yeah. In fact, they must. On a rainy day, the thing about Jacob. Vallo. Vallo. He could have a small village under his hat. A generous and he o- fellow. He often did. And he often did. Because it was a pretty unpopular state. Yeah, 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 I he, phrase it that he way. He had all of Wyoming under, <laughs> under his long hat. Yeah. And everyone was really grateful for that. And that's all, obviously got a lot of nominations that day. <laughs> everyone uh, in Wyoming nominated him. Well done, Jacob. Thanks, Jacob. Shout out uh, to Wyoming. Of you course, the nickname there is the Equality State. You are the oh, hero. Oh, really? Made. Whereabouts is Wyoming? Where does Wyoming fall? Is it in the Midwest? Uh, no, it is... If I'm looking on the map there... Oh, it's, it's in the mid- uh, Midwest. No, what did I just say? Midwest. It's west of That's the Midwest. It, it is what should be the Midwest. Yeah, yeah it's right. the But the Midwest Midwest. is really in the Mid-East. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> sort of. It's confusing. But I it don't get it. It's next to Idaho. Oh, Does that, does that help everyone? Yeah. Does that help Spud anyone? country. You beaut. All right, thank you so much for bringing it home. I'd like to thank from Stevenage in Hertfordshire. Oh, happy with cow that. country. In uh, Great Britain, I would like to thank... She ain't no dummy. Hertford is Hertford's a kind of cow? Hereford. Hereford, sorry. Apologies. She ain't no dummy, she ain't no cow. She's Claire Smart. Claire oh, Smart. Claire Smart. Well done. Well done. Well she done. won the Nobel Prize. Yes. This year, Bop. Yep. What was it for? Ceramics. Oh, wow. She did so well. Like best ceramics? No. Uh quantity over quality. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> most the cera- most, most ceramics. ceramics. She actually spent eighteen hours a day. At her potting wheel. What'd she do the other six? Had a nap. <laughs> really? She d- slept for three. Yep. Um, she'd uh, take a dump. For three? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. 30 minutes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> then so the other two and a half. She'd watch the news. Yep. Ceramics news? F- no. Okay. You can't just live in okay. ceramics. Yep. So she'd watch the news for an hour. Yep. Sandra Sully's her favourite. Really? Late and night? And then... The final half hour, hour, hour. And a half. She would maybe. have a meal. Oh, a meal. She'd have him over. <laughs> yeah. Oh, great name. Wow. Every day. Wow. Every day. That's so cool. It's great that he's still alive. Yeah. <laughs> that is Even though he was exploded in a factory. Wait, why would you? <laughs> why would you? Why would you, Dave? Why hey, would you? All good things. So, oh. congratulations to Claire Smart. Must come to an end. Well much done, like Claire Smart. Much like this episode. Thank you, Claire Smart. Thanks to Devin, Connor, William, Ted, Jacob, and Claire Smart. And congratulations on their The awards. sexy six, as they'll always be known. They always. To history. Hmm. Well, I guess that's it for episode 199. So Holy close. We're so shit. close to that sweet 200. Oh, all we have to do is uh, live less than 24 hours and we'll get it in the bag. Oh, my yeah, gosh. Baby. Can we do it? Yes. I yes, reckon. I reckon we can. I hope there's no gas leak in this in this hotel tonight. 
I really need a piss. Oh, I'm, <laughs> am I the only one? I'm, I'm not the only one dying here. If, but if, you're the if one people are watching the video of this on YouTube, my legs are dancing. Yeah. And they have been for 45 and minutes, my I leg, My legs are damp and they have been for about 45 <laughs> minutes. Well, that does bring us to the end of the episode. Thanks so much to everyone that supports us on Patreon. Again, it's patreon.com slash pod. Get some rewards. Support the show. It keeps everything going along nicely. Yeah. And support each other as well if you yeah, can. Yeah. And live peacefully. If you know someone who might like the show, tell them about it. Yeah. Be annoying about it. Yeah. Oi, you. You look cool enough. I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Oh. Do go on is worth a look. Do I have to wear a trench coat while I do that? Or do oh, I wow. naked underneath the trench coat? Are you flashing a nip? No, I'm flashing a pod. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, wrap it up. Wrap it up, mate. Wrap it up? Oh, I want to take a piss first. <laughs> Some sorry, people are I'm probably so already so watching so it. Sorry. And if they're not, though, if you wanted to see what this looked like, you can see it at youtube.com slash pod. If you've gotten this far and now you're like, oh, I'm going to go listen to that all again, but also with a visual medium... Or just watch it with the sound down. Oh, that's probably better, actually, mm. yeah. I'd prefer that. I reckon it would be a better experience. Yeah. <laughs> do it, go do something else. Just have us on in the background. Yeah. Anyway, um, until uh, next week. <laughs> yeah, well, we just go to our website, dogoonpod.com, for all the tickets to our live shows. We've got merchandise. Bop is sending out merchandise every week now. If you want to buy a T-shirt, you can. Jess will get that to you. If you want to uh, find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all that stuff. Follow us there. We post on nearly pod. every day. Primates this week. Jess came on. It's the 60th episode spectacular. Wow. And it was maybe, I think, the funnest episode I've done so far. So fun. It was about spooky primate stories. It was hilarious. With Jackson Bailey from Sans Pants. And, oh, he's and really as fun. always, my second banana, Evan Monroe Smith. It was so fun. Highly recommended. Yeah, give it a put it in your ears. Mm. Do it. Do yourself and a in favor. your butt, if you wanna. Preferably, yes. Spooky. <laughs> and uh, that does bring us to the end of the episode. <laughs> Don't forget to vote for your favorite pie or, or pasty loving person. Number one. Number two. Number two, and then number three, baby man. No. No. no, oh, no sorry. Don't vote for him. anyone but him. Then vote again for Dave. If you've got a spare vote. Yeah, give yeah. it to Dave. Hassle your family. Get them to vote for me, we please. We just want to get top ten. I need yeah. this. Jess and I will get top ten. Because mm-hmm. apparently the top ten get 500. Me and Jess could get 250 That's great. each. We could have a lovely meal. And oh. Dave, who already is way wealthier than us. <laughs> Wants to go for That is not 10. true. That is untrue. All I right, need this man. so badly. Well, Matt needs to piss badly, so yeah. let's yeah, say goodbye. So do I. Who's going to go first for a piss? Let's rock off for it. Here we go. Oh, my God. Let's Why are you doing this now? Why can't we just finish? <laughs> no, no, rock off for it. One, two, three. Oh. One, two, three, go. Okay. Oh, no, no, that was mine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Matt's da- Matt gets the first piss. I've got to go then because this is gonna. I'm going to die. Uh, thanks so much for listening to the episode. Uh, we'll be back next week with our 200th episode oh, spectacular. Yes. But until then, I will say thank you and I will say goodbye. Later. Matt, go take a fucking piss. Oh, yuck. Oh. <laughs> I'll just leave the camera going for a bit. Great. Dave. Matt, take the microphone and Dave, with you. let's just you and I have a chat. Hey, what do you want to talk about? Matt. Is he okay? I don't think so. Do you reckon he's... You know. What? You know. I don't know. You know, do you reckon there's something going on? Do I think he's pissing? Yeah. I can hear him. Oh. I mean, here's the thing. Women, it's harder to avoid the water, but men, you don't have to go straight into the water. True. You can go into the ceramic, the back or the sides. Matt is clearly a water pisser. <laughs> you don't want that at 4 a.m. No. that would wake you up. But that's why I've chosen the bedroom furthest away from the bathroom. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. I've chosen a bedroom that doesn't exist. Yeah, but you're on that couch right there. Yeah, it's not going to be fun. You'll be right. It's that or you share with one of us. <sighs> and I'm a snorer. Actually, Matt is too. Are you actually a snorer? Yeah. How bad? Um, We'd have to ask Aiden. Okay, but do you reckon he snore quite badly? No, I don't does think so. Does he ever wake you up? No. Nah. Never? No, no, no. He says I'm not that bad. Oh, okay. But I've been, because I've been sick, I'm still a bit congested. So I'm waking up in the morning and my mouth is just so dry that I'm like, my oh, was definitely snoring. Oh, but mouth. he doesn't say anything. No, he's sweet. What an absolute angel. Girl, you're my angel. You're my, my da- only, only angel. angel. Is, that it? is that how it goes? No. I thought you were my only but it, Darling yeah. angel. Yo, you're my angel. You're my darling angel.
fantastic uh, stuff. Uh, closer than my peeps, you are to me. Hell baby. yeah, Matt. Do you want to uh, tag in here while I take a piss? I mean, you guys don't have to babysit me. I can. But is this is this a YouTube bonus? Yeah. yeah. Outro. What was going? What I miss? Dave said, "Do you think Matt's okay?" And I said, "What do you mean?" He said, "And I said, do I think he's pissing?" Yeah, I can hear him. Um, <laughs> I can oh. hear you pissing, by the way. I hope the mics didn't pick that up. Probably. I was thinking about uh, that famous scene in The League of Their Own when Tom Hanks just pissed for ages. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I couldn't get anywhere near that time done, unfortunately. Nah, but hey. It was so fun when I was a kid watching that. So funny. This guy just keep it out. A break. And he goes again. That is oh, funny that stuff. That's funny stuff. Didn't realise now until later. Very toxic. Pissing. This, this man, he didn't believe women should play Oh, Women shouldn't play baseball. There's no crying in baseball, that's for sure. Oh, that's what he said. Yeah, I mean, he's coaching them. I'm sure, I think he doesn't necessarily think they're going to be great. Anyway, back then I'm like, yes, Tom Hanks, preach. <laughs> and now? But now I'm like, hey, if they want their little league of their own. Let them have a go. Let them have a it's go. It's cute. Yeah. They're wearing little skirts. Just like put on a put your face on that and get out there. It is a that is a great movie. I watched it it's earlier. Great this movie. Year. It holds up. It's still pretty. It's Madonna's still actually quite good at it. She's really good. Rosie O'Donnell. Rosie O'Donnell's very funny. It's a great ensemble. Oh, such a good ensemble. Mm. Oui. Oui. What's mm. your favorite movie? No, that fuck that. That's a worst that's question. That's a really ever. hard so question. Hard. I don't. I don't think I know. I don't know either. So why would I ask it? Um, I'm so sorry I did that. The old boring AFL footballer answer in the 90s was always Shawshank Redemption. And sure. I think that's a pretty good answer. It's a fantastic film. I was lucky enough to see it without knowing the twist. Really? And I loved it. Yeah. I, I, don't, was, th- I don't think I knew. I was on board the whole time. I watched it for high school. Mm. And it had already been out for a while. And, I, and people were like, oh, you didn't even know what was coming I'm like oh, i'm glad i didn't that was yeah. i was like what a sad end to the oh my god <laughs> 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 yeah so I, I'm, but i'm not sure i mean i w- probably wouldn't say that is it but no but it's it may be the up castle, there I, act, I did a, a radio thing on abc a few months ago and i had to name my top five oof and i list i try to go for like some variation in time i, I said the castle I said Get Out, which is probably the most recent one That's that I one. love. Uh, I said, I don't think I said Shawshank. What else did I say? I said uh, uh, the second rebooted Planet of the Apes, which was yep. uh, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, I think. No, or Rise of the... Yeah, Dawn right. of the Planet of the Apes. Oh, yeah. Or Rise. Rise, I thought. It was Rise. It should be Rise, but I think it's Dawn. I think mm. they're confusingly backwards. Right. Uh, I should know that. And what else did I say? I said a couple others. Oh, with Nail and I. Maybe that's my favourite. Have you seen that? No. It's very... I think you'd love it. Would I? It's way up your alley. Sort of black humour. English. It's uh, Richard E. Grant's breakout ah. film. Very. You, have you seen that? I have not seen it. Back oh, from the John, by the way. Real yeah, good. Yeah, Dave's back. I feel a lot better. Yeah. Ready to be funny now and sadly the show's over. <laughs> ah, well. Well, this is really just... Is this just a YouTube bonus section? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, hi, everyone. Hey, thanks Talking for sticking favorite around. Film. Did you name your favourite film, Jess? No, because I, I asked the question and then I was like, it's such a dumb question because, I don't know. You know, like it's... I wonder if I wrote down those five somewhere. I'm sure I would have. Yeah. Dave, do you have one? Uh, Terminator 2. Oh, even better than the original. Yeah. Some say. I do. <laughs> Bob, you anything in the ballpark? Nothing comes to mind. At one point, I definitely used to say, I think Back to the Future, one I love. I've also said in the past, um, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Yeah. But I haven't seen that in so long that I wouldn't be able to, I, c- I couldn't tell you for sure if it's good or not That's anymore. the problem. There's all these movies that are like a little bit cliche to say are your favourite or movies that sort of affected you. I remember, I think I saw King's Speech two or three times at the movies. Like, I really loved that. Wow. I just thought it was such a good story and, and the performances were really good in it. And it was shot really nicely. It is a good film. It it's really a good is. Film. I think it's okay to like that. I don't know if it is. Maybe it's not. I, I don't know anymore. I don't know anything. What did you say was yours, Dave? Terminator 2. Is that genuine? Uh, yeah, I just love action films. Speed, 
Con Air. Speed's great. Con Air. I, I saw Con Air tw- twice at the movies, I think. Yeah, it's so good. The Rock, Raiders of the Lost Ark, and Wayne's World. They're all my favourites. Yeah, nice. <laughs> love them. Oh, I haven't seen that yet. So you love Raiders of the Lost Ark. Is that the first? The first one. You should come on Primates. I'd love to talk about Andy's it. Andy's favourite movie as well, Andy Matthews. And there's the monkey in it? Yes. Bad we should do that. We should so do you that. You don't know what this means. So bad dates. You don't know what that means. I don't. Fantastic. You're going to love it. It's the best. Okay, here's... I've just found the... Tw- I tweeted about it the night I did it. I had With Nail and I, The Castle, The King of Kong, which is a oh, yeah. documentary. <laughs> oh, that is great. Such a good movie. Dawn of the Planet of the Apes and Get Out. That was the five that I put together. Yeah, nice. And this was strangely coincidental. With Nail and I, 1987. The Castle, 1997. The King of Kong, 2007. Get Out, 2017. Isn't that freaky? That's weird. And then Dawn of the Planet of the Apes 2014. You like one out, movie every 10 <laughs> years. <laughs> wow. And I think were they all they were all within my lifetime, I guess, but I didn't Bear. see I didn't see With Nail and I until much later, obviously. <laughs> Imagine being a toddler going, With Nail, I love the dark <laughs> comedy. The struggling actors. <laughs> I relate to this. That's how I used to speak. I want to tell you, you still speak off off mic. Yeah, yeah. yeah since this is all the character. Since that camera is an amazing character. Giving a bit of eyes to the camera. Have we done? This is too much. This is self indulgent now, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I mean, in the comments of this YouTube video, tell us your favourite film. Hmm. 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 Put hmm. it out there. Hmm. How are our suggestions? Best ever. Hmm. Yes. If you could just comment yes, if you like. <laughs> Which would be a you know a prog band, but also an appropriate answer to, to the, the question. question. Also, put it. Oh, who's your favourite prog band? Okay, Dave, wrap this up. Ah, uh, King Crimson. Uh, that is the end of the episode again. Kansas. Um. Okay. Can't Can name. A, can't name a favourite film. Can you give me can't name a favourite film. Can't name a favourite prog band. Yeah. I'm not a real person. <laughs> what about Devin Townsend? Yeah. Project. He's saw that was prog prog medley. Yeah, I love Devin Townsend. <laughs> he does a bit Great. of prog stuff, so all right, let's all wave until Matt turns it off. Oh. <laughs> but wave you the have whole to way. Wave, wave as the you whole go. way. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs>